Spartans looking for their first 9 0 start since 1966. They're number seven in the initial college football rankings. One of three Big Ten teams in the top 10. Iowa just knocked off Indiana. And it looks like they'll be a top 10 team going down with TCU getting blown out at Oklahoma State. Mark D'Antonio in his ninth year as a head coach of the Spartans. They have won 12 straight Big Ten games on the road. In fact, he's lost just one November road game. That was back in 2008 at Penn State. Mike Riley in his first season at the helm here in Lincoln, coming over from Oregon State, where he spent the last 12 years. It's been a struggle as uh, the Huskers are off to their worst start in 55 years. But they have a lot of talent on this roster, no doubt. And all of their losses have been in close games. In fact, four losses have come on the last play. Nebraska won the toss and elected to defer. So Michigan State will start on offense in front of 86,000. Michigan State, the 10th unbeaten team to play here in November. The last time a top 10 team visited was Kansas State back in 1999. RJ Shelton is deep. Drew Brown will kick off. And this will be a touchback sailing out of the end zone. It will come out to the 25. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville will join us in a little bit. And Brian, we mentioned Michigan State undefeated, but they've won a couple of games by a field goal. Of course, the crazy ending in the win against Michigan. They've been banged up. This is the healthiest they've been since their week two win over Oregon. Yeah, they desperately needed that bye week. They needed to get healthy first and foremost. Now you enter into November, and Mark D'Antonio loves to coin it the phrase championship month. They need Jack Allen back at center. They're going to have him tonight. And they need Connor Cook, who's really been the one that has held everything together to have another good night. He's had three 300-yard passing games in a row. And Cook to throw on first down. Got a man. Incomplete, though. The pass a little high. Intended for R.J. Shelton. Cook is 20 and 1 all time against the Big Ten. Overall, 31 and 3. The most wins in Michigan State history. He's had a Heisman Trophy type season with his numbers. Leads the Big Ten in passing touchdowns. And Nebraska defense has really struggled against the pass. The Spartans will run it here. Gerald Holmes getting the call through a gap at the 35. Pass midfield and finally run out of play. They'll mark him out at the 32 yard line. We've seen a lot of creativity from Dave Warner, the offensive coordinator. Take a look at the motion here. Just a little bit of distraction for linebackers, and that's when they get the opportunity to run power. Their favorite play downhill. You see Jack Allen. The All-American center on the very first play of the game, they get him out, pull him, and get him on the second level. Very good start for Michigan State on the ground. 43-yard run for the sophomore. That was just his 40th carry of the season. Cook to the air, and the pass caught by Burbridge, but he paid for it. He got Wallop at the 26-yard line, but that's a gain of six on the play. You know, when you talk about Connor Cook, I think the last two games, the Indiana game and the Michigan game, when Jack Allen was not on the field, he's their captain. Connor Cook, there was a, a void of leadership on the field. I think Connor Cook stepped into that leadership role in the last two games. You saw emotionally in that Indiana game, him on the sideline going after guys. They're going to need him to continue that through the month of November. Big hit by Joshua Kalu. On that catch by Burbridge. Now Holmes being patient, but he stood up short of the first down marker. True freshman Dedrick Young leading the charge there at linebacker for the Huskers. So it'll bring up a third down for Michigan State. We'll see now if that offensive line can lean on Nebraska's D line. There's some talent up front. 
for the Huskers. So this play right here might give us a sense about how this night is going to go in the trenches. It's going to be a dogfight in the trenches. There's no question. But as you mentioned, Malik Collins, Vincent Valentine are two of the best defensive tackle tandem in all the Big Ten. They'll be up to the challenge tonight. But with Connor Cook at quarterback, Michigan State not afraid to throw it a lot on third down and short. And that's what they'll do here. Out of the backfield, and it is a first down. Although, as uh, Holmes caught it, he actually stepped back. Let's see now if they give him forward progress or not. No. He had the first down. He stepped back, and then Jonathan Rose made a very good open field tackle. So it is a fourth down. Wow. And you saw the, uh, the officials, both officials, communicating. Dietrich Young had a chance to get him down for bring up a fourth down and there he is he gets hit right at that 22 yard line look like be interesting. So it's fourth down. Now Michigan State not even thinking about a field goal. Mark D'Antonio going forward here never a doubt in his mind and this is different than you know back when D'Antonio started coming from the defensive side of the ball in these situations in the past he might kick a field goal five six years ago but with this offensive line Connor Cook at quarterback well, I go for it. I think he realizes that uh, he's coming into a situation here with a wounded Nebraska team that wants more than anything to get out from underneath these five losses by 13 points and that he wants to take any kind of momentum out of their sails early in the game. Shift over the offensive line. Yeah. Now Brian Allen will snap the football. That's Jack's brother, so they go unbalanced and hand it off to Scott. He stopped. <laughs> Greg McMullen there for the Cornhuskers. A huge play for the Nebraska defense. Valentine was in there as well. We take a look. Here comes the shift. They've done this. Several times this year they just shift over and now they want to run the football now take a look right in the middle of the screen Vincent Valentine he's the one that gets the push on Brian Allen Remember, that's not Jack Allen now that's Brian Allen who's not as quite as stout as Jack Allen and then McMullen comes in from the outside great defensive stand from Nebraska. That'll inject some life in this Nebraska team with six losses. The most they've ever had entering November. And Tommy Armstrong, who missed last week due to injury, throws an incompletion as Wester can't look distracted. There was a linebacker dropping John Reschke, and I think he got a piece of the ball. Armstrong, a junior from Texas, we mentioned, didn't play last week. That ended a streak of 22 consecutive starts. He's got turf toe, Brian. I know that's an injury you've had. It's not easy to overcome in just a week's time. No, there's a lot of different, you know, grades of, of turf toe, but basically you're tearing a ligament in your big toe, and it's a very painful injury. So certainly playing on some adrenaline tonight, Tommy Armstrong. Here's Amani Cross getting the call straight ahead. Cross is a big back at 230 pounds, and he's out to the 30 yard line for about four. Riley Bulla, the leading tackler for Michigan State, made the stop. You know, Tommy Armstrong has had an outstanding season, especially statistically, Dave. I know they don't have the wins, but he's second in the Big Ten in total offense. And for them to win tonight, to upset this Michigan State team, they're going to need Tommy Armstrong to throw the football. They've struggled to run the ball, especially between the tackles because of this offensive line. There's a lot on Tommy's shoulders tonight. He's third of the Big Ten in passing. Michigan State and a rush for Armstrong, and it's incomplete. It's intended for Seathan Carter, the tight end. Darian Harris, a captain on defense and linebacker, had good coverage, and so Nebraska goes three and out after turning over Michigan Number State on downs. You now Michigan State has struggled on special teams, although their biggest win came with a special teams fumble recovery for a touchdown at Michigan. They gave up a punt return and kick return for touchdowns. Their field goal kicker has struggled. We'll see if Kings can get off a return here. It's an excellent punt. Kings from his 20 makes the first man miss. And gets knocked down short of the 30 yard line. 50 yard punt and a return of about seven yards. It's the week eight matchup for Monday Night Football at 810 Eastern on ESPN. It's the Bears and the Chargers. 
And former Michigan State standout running back Jeremy Langford starting for the Bears at running back for the injured Matt Forte. As we welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hilton. No score. Michigan State with an excellent first possession, but it stalled inside the 25 yard line when the Spartans went for it on fourth and one, and they were stuffed at the line of scrimmage. True freshman LJ Scott in the game at running back for Michigan State on first down from the 28 yard line. And it's play action. Cook looking downfield, got a man. It's overthrown and complete. Intended for Monty Medeiros at the 30 yard line. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick fil A. We've already talked about one of them, Jack Allen, the All American center, finally back after missing two games. It's going to be a great matchup. I love these matchups in the trenches. Offensive center against a defensive tackle and Malik Collins, who's an outstanding player, right in the middle of your screen all night. Be fun to watch. Another pass play for Cook, and that was a dangerous throw. That was well read by the defense. It was intended for LJ Scott. It's third and ten. You know, we saw Michigan State get a little bit cute on that fourth down attempt. And to the point where, why did they need it, Brian? And this is something where you can just line up, you got your offensive line intact, do what you do best. Yeah, it's it's a it's a questionable call. You know, you get Jack Allen back, let him snap the ball and run right behind him. So maybe you got a little cute. Certainly, I don't I don't think we'll see any unbalanced lines for the rest of this game. Big third down here. Allen missed the last two games of injury. Was hurt, injured his ankle playing left tackle. Cook throwing it deep again. Incomplete. Intended for Burbridge. Jonathan Rose. A senior from Alabama had coverage, and so the Spartans throw it on all three downs, and now they got a punt. Yeah, Jonathan Rose been maligned. Looked like he might have got there a little early. Some pressure from Malik Collins. Just talked about him getting back there all night. The challenge for Nebraska will be to get pressure on the quarterback. They have not been very good defensively getting in the backfield and pressuring quarterbacks. That's why their secondary has been exposed most of the season. They've given up 43 pass plays of 20 yards or more. As that one was nearly blocked, Hart Barger gets it away, and it's fair caught by Jordan Westerkamp at the 35-yard line. 47-yard boot as Williams was oh so close to rejecting that punt. But the Huskers got to like the start. Especially in defense. Earlier this morning at Lincoln Airport, the Gold Star Kids Honor Flight landed from Omaha for widows and children of the fallen in Iraq and Afghanistan. 22 young widows, 35 children from Nebraska, ranging from ages 4 to 14. Now, the plane that they took, it's the same plane that chartered Michigan State down here and the Spartan players and coaches left notes on all the seats for uh, the kids and widows uh, to find when they Real get on classic. the plane today. Classic. So first and 10 for Nebraska. Here's Cross straight ahead. He's across the 40 yard line picked up about five. Well, let's take a look at tonight's impact players presented by Chick-fil-A along the defensive front for Michigan State. So much is made of Shalit Calhoun and his ability to create havoc off the edge, as with Malik McDowell on the inside. But it's their importance that's going to have a huge impact on Michigan State's back end tonight. McDowell, a sophomore from Detroit. Calhoun, a senior, fifth-year senior, as Cross fell down at the 42, only got a yard on that play. And Lukes, McDowell is a guy, and people know about Shalit Calhoun, but McDowell is the guy that not enough people are talking about nationally when it comes to one of the better defensive tackles in the country. I think he's the most disruptive one technique or zero, a guy that's going to play over the nose, inside shade of the center and the guard and occupy double teams, collapses the pocket as well as any player in college football on the defensive front. He's six foot six, and you would think that he wouldn't play with such good leverage, but he plays with his pads low. Big third down and three here for Armstrong and he's got a wide open man. It's a first down Alonzo Moore did not play last week along with Armstrong. He had a shoulder injury 
But Moore is back. So is Armstrong, and it's a first down for the Cornhuskers. Game of 13. Nice job by Armstrong. He had Shalit Calhoun right in his face. They tried to block him with Newby. Just go down and find in the zone, find a vacated area. Nice job by Alonzo Moore. They're going to need him tonight. He's kind of one of their deep, big play receivers that they're going to need to open up the top of this coverage. 18th catch of the season for Moore. Armstrong with a quick pass to Westerkamp out in the flat. Good block by Stanley Morgan out there, and it's a gain of seven to the 37-yard line. Fellas, we're seeing a lot of rotation in the defensive back end, but you've got a couple of veterans right now, and number seven, Demetrius Cox, and Monte Nicholson, number nine, at the safety spot. And Brian, a lot of guys lined up near the line of scrimmage. Nobody in the deep back end or certainly deep half of this coverage for Michigan State. Well, Harlan Barnett, who's our defensive coordinator, taking over for Pat Narduzzi, has not been happy with this secondary. That's why there's been so much change in the second we'll see how they play tonight Nebraska gonna pound it here with cross and he's got the first down inside the 30 yard line this is a Nebraska team that's upset and I was talking to some folks down on the field other coaches and they say that it's the attitude of Mike Riley that has kept this team together his positive attitude there's no question he's a positive guy but you got to have something positive happen on the field to get the confidence and really this team that's what they need more than anything is the confidence that they can come out and play against the top 10 team here at home and and that bad things are not going to happen and this drive certainly is a goes a long way they hand it off to the fullback Andy Janovich he breaks a tackle and Janovich shows great balance He's down to the 23 yard line a safety Cox had to make the tackle to gain of six yards and it should have only gained about a half yard. And this is the unquestioned crowd favorite Janovich you know they love the fullbacks here in the heartland <laughs> and Janovich certainly fits the bill one of the best players pound for pound this coaching staff says on the entire team one of their best special teams players as well. He's a senior from the state of Nebraska. Not a lot of guys from the state of Nebraska that are, are playing as Armstrong runs and he gets swallowed up. Craig Evans there for Michigan State. It's a loss in the play. Third and long. See, that's the type of play that you got to have on that second and, and, and to go situation because now you're in third and long. If you block that at the point of attack, that's where the value, Brian, of his athleticism, Tommy Armstrong, comes into play. Didn't get it done that time, and now they're in third and long. Yeah, that's because big Craig Evans at 320 pounds. He's hard to block one on one. Just made a great play. And they can just rotate these D linemen in and out. They get such great depth. Here's third and eight for Armstrong. Going to throw it up. And Westerkamp trying to go get it. It's incomplete. Fourth down. It would be about a 45 yard field goal from here. Drew Brown has the leg, and so the Cornhusker is going to try. And strike first here with three. To take a look at Jordan Westerkamp. Watch his head come around right out of his break. See how his head goes back to the quarterback? That's not what you want as a receiver. You want a receiver to run out of the break knowing that the football is going to be on the sideline. I think if he doesn't turn back and look for that ball and just sprints to the sideline, he might make that catch. Forty four yard try. And it is good. Just snuck in that left upright. And Nebraska strikes first against number seven, Michigan State. Well, you said, Brian, not just about having a positive attitude, you need something positive to happen. Well, they pay off the drive by getting three points and have the lead midway through the first. This week on Sunday NFL Countdown as Peyton Manning returns to Indy it turns out his impact ran far deeper than just his play on the field. Meet the dozens of high school players named Peyton after their parents favorite quarterback throughout the state of Indiana Sunday NFL Countdown following NFL insiders. And, okay, Ash Brian Greasy Tom Lugan Bill here in Lincoln growing number of uh, Peyton's in the state of Colorado as well. <laughs> so you're seeing that in your neighborhood huh. You didn't name your son Peyton though. That was before his time in Denver. And Shelton going to run it out here for Michigan State. And Shelton passed the 30 yard line as we check in with Adnan Burke in the studio.
Well, there goes my argument of Ole Miss. Uh, <laughs> if it wins the, the SEC, even with two losses, getting into the college football playoff. Yeah, I don't think anybody was buying that last week when you said that. It's certainly not buying it this week. I got another quarterback in the game. Damian Terry. Cook was lined up at quarterback. L.J. Scott gets the call and he pushes the pile to the 37. But that was interesting. They had Damian Terry, another quarterback, lined up at wide receiver. With Brian Greasy, Tom Luganbill, Dave Pash here in Lincoln, where Nebraska has sold out every game since 1962. NCAA record 346 consecutive sellouts. And the last time is an unranked team that they beat a top 10 squad. You got to go back to 1977. Cook to the air and the catch made but short of a first down. Shelton stopped by Cockrell at the 41 yard line. So we'll have a third down and a couple. I like what Nebraska is doing so far early in this game defensively. Mark Banker their defensive coordinator has been a lot of heat. Uh, on this defense the last couple of weeks especially last week against Purdue but forget this defense was put in difficult situations in that game because of five turnovers but so far early they've been up to the task against Michigan State. Yeah Nebraska minus eight overall in turnover ratio. They'll just settle for a stop and a punt here though on third down and three. Cook with time everybody covered and throws high intended for Burbridge incomplete. Chris Jones in coverage and so far Cook has been off the mark. He's three of eight for nine yards. Connor Cook's been great all year reading the field. You see he looks left comes all the way back across the field to his favorite target Burbridge and that ball is just a little bit too high. Again Nebraska playing man to man coverage holding up on the back end despite the fact that they didn't get pressure on the quarterback. Wester camp is back. Nebraska was awfully close to blocking Hartbarger's first punt. And this is a huge punt. And it will go into the end zone for a touchback. Well, Dave, we've talked about how many plays Connor Cook has made this year for this team. He's had some opportunities already in the first two drives of this game and hasn't been able to connect. That one dropped by R.J. Shelton, but they get a nice play action look in the second series. They get both linebacker and safety to step up, and Monty Medeiros is running wide open down the field. He misses him, and then he misses that last third down to Burbridge. He needs to make those plays. He's made them all year, and, and he knows he just needs to settle down and begin to convert. Half of his passes have been overthrows, but this is a guy that won a Big Ten championship. Won a Rose Bowl and a Cotton Bowl. Won a Cotton Bowl and come from behind fashion. Armstrong out in the flat to Moore. And Moore dropped just short of the first down marker by Tyson Smith as Moore is shaken up. Yeah, Michigan that's... State continues to rotate those back end guys with Tyson Smith on the tackle. That's not a good sign there. Alonzo Moore was a game time decision with a shoulder. You see that harness on the right shoulder. He had a painful injury and wanted to come out and, and do everything he can to help his team. They really just needed him to, to take the top off the defense. He's their best deep threat. And unfortunately, he looked like he came down right on that shoulder. Last week, they lost to Mornay Pearson L to a leg injury. And he was a guy that was a dynamic return man as well as a receiver. He, he's done with a leg injury. But yeah, but those two guys are really the, the playmakers in speed on this on this offense. Westerkamp's more of a possession guy, so without the two of them, it's going to be hard for these receivers to separate for Tommy Armstrong against man coverage. Armstrong going to throw on second and short, and Riley takes it away from the defender and still going inside the 48-yard line of Michigan State. That was a terrific catch, Brandon Riley, another guy that's been injured. He gets a big play. Of 23 yards. Well, Brandon Riley said, I don't need separation. I'll just rip the ball away from Demetrius Cox. These are the kinds of plays that they're going to need to make at this position in this game because they don't have the burners on the outside to separate. 30 catches on the year for Riley. Almost 600 receiving yards. He is a big play wide out. They'll run it on first down and a hole for Cross. A gain of seven. 
No, Brian, you go back to that last second and short, and it affords you the ability to take a shot through the air because you feel really good about your third down situation. So the down and distance early for this offense for Nebraska has been so advantageous for the offensive play caller. Yeah, and they just haven't been able to run the football consistently enough, Tom. And that's what I think the, the biggest benefit when you're able to throw the ball and loosen it up is to be able to run the ball in between the tackles without eight or nine guys in the box like they had against Purdue a week ago. Armstrong will throw here. It's a wide receiver screen as Westerkamp gets lit up. Somehow he hung onto the ball. Darian Harris absolutely torched him, but Westerkamp hung onto it. He gets a standing ovation here at Memorial Stadium. We see so many targetings, Dave, you know, so many ones that are kind of questionable. Give Darren Harris credit for coming up and making a good solid tackle with his head right between the numbers. That's, that's pretty to watch. Third down and four. Armstrong looking deep. Now steps up to run. Trying to get the corner. Instead, he gets Chris Fry, but able to power to the 40. He'll come up short of the first down, but it'll be fourth and a yard. It looked yeah. like it was going to be about four and three. It was a great effort there by Tommy Armstrong. You know, they were trying to throw a, a, a trick play, a throwback to a, to a running back. It wasn't there, and Tommy Armstrong just uses athletic ability and then his heart at the end there to drive through Fry and bring up a fourth and short situation. They bring in Janovich at 230 pounds, the fullback. The tailback is 230 pounds. The Spartans stack the box on fourth down and one. It's cross, and he powers past the marker. Ripped through the arms of Malik McDowell to get the first down. This is something, Dave, that they have not been able to do consistently is run between the tackles and just take a look. Green hats are not in the backfield. They're getting push on Malik McDowell. That's huge for Mike Riley. He knows that if we're able to get third and fourth and one conversions, run the ball between the tackles, it's a huge advantage. Nick Gates, the right tackle, lost his helmet on the play. So he's got to go to the sideline for a down. Corey Whitaker comes in to play right tackle. As you see the balance by Nebraska here. Through the opening quarter, nearing two minutes to go. Armstrong rolling out. Armstrong looking downfield, and it's caught. It's a touchdown by Westerkamp. A penalty flag down, though, at the 15 yard line. A penalty marker at the 22 yard line as well. Westerkamp looked like he pushed off to get free. Here's John O'Neill. Defense number seven. Now forget that defensive holding and it's nine nothing Husker you get a fourth and one and you go for it aggressively and then you're in that red zone fringe area where so many teams love to take a shot I love the play call by Danny Langsdorf get your quarterback mobile quarterback out on the edge they seal Shalit Calhoun and just throw the ball up and give him a chance to make a play because Western camp has been your most consistent receiver all year. So much talk this week here in Lincoln about would Mike Riley even make it through the season fans frustrated but it's a great start here 10 zip Nebraska. Right now Michigan State at number seven down 10 nothing. And a pooch kick that's taken by one of the up men of the 20 yard line. It's Delton Williams. He's brought down at the 30. That's where the Spartans will operate late in the first quarter. Go back and take a look. The first thing you need to do if you're going to run a bootleg is you need to control the edge. There's Shalit Calhoun. They do a nice job. You get just enough. Carter, the, the tight end, gets just enough. Then freeze it there, guys. You see, he's beat here. All you need to do is give him a chance downfield, Wester, Wester Camp. And this is the struggle that Michigan State has had in the secondary. Harlan Burnett has, knows that he has struggled in the back end. Demetrius Cox has struggled. They're biting on routes. It's been a tough year for them in that secondary, and Nebraska is starting to take advantage. So you had Cox the safety that time covering the wideout Western camp, and he gets the touchdown. Here's Gerald Holmes through a gap. Another big run for Holmes. He stepped out. 
at the 45 yard line. That's a 25 yard scamper for Gerald Holmes. That's their best offense right now. Just hand it to that guy running left. Yeah, and they get Jack Allen out. You know, take a look. He's going to come back, and then they're going to get guys out, two guys out, pulling in front. And why not? Jack Allen's one of your best players. He gets the block on the linebacker, and then you insert Holmes. Cook to the air on first down. He's going to look deep, going for Shelton. Broken up at a flag. Byerson Cockrell in coverage of Shelton. Will get called for interference. Pass interference, defense, number 28. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. I think we're going to see this all night, Dave. We're going to see both quarterbacks taking shots downfield because both teams' weaknesses, their biggest weaknesses are their secondaries. And this time, Cockrell, not a lot of confidence back there with the way that they've been torched this year. And he's just not in good position to look back for the football. He did not play last week in their loss at Purdue due to a family situation. And with a penalty by Cockrell, it puts the ball to Nebraska 30. So far, Gerald Holmes has 70 of the 82 yards of total offense for Sparty. Cook and a keep. And Cook dragged down to the 26 yard line. Here's Adnan in the studio. It's 10 nothing Adnan Nebraska on top but the Spartans on the move just outside a minute to go here in the opening quarter after a four yard run by the quarterback Connor Cook he's going to hand it off to Shelton on the jet sweep and that was well defended he's pushed out by Chris Jones it'll bring up a third down no Brian there's some of that creativity just another wrinkle in this offense they bring him back in motion and then it looks like it's going to be downhill power. You think things are going to be between the tackle and they take the ball to the perimeter. Really well devised. But that was a loss in the play though Luke so it's third down and eight now. You need to get pressure on the quarterback there has been. It's been a struggle for Nebraska off the edges with their defensive ends really where their pressure has come from has been inside with their tackles. Spartans yet to convert on third down. Here comes a blitz. Cook. The pass is high again and incomplete. It was intended for Shelton. That's another overthrow, the fifth of the first quarter by normally accurate Connor Cook. And he had a receiver. He had Shelton coming open. He's recognized the blitz. You're not going to fool Connor Cook. You know, he's a senior quarterback. You bring a safety off the edge. He says, big deal. You know, I got it picked up. I'm going to stay in the pocket and find my receiver. But He's been inaccurate Dave and, and that just tells me a little bit of early kind of jitters here in this this game a guy that never seems to be nervous yeah. but maybe it's hit him tonight for some reason Geiger from 46 and it's good Michael Geiger who had been up and down this year after a great start as a freshman gets the Spartans on the board late in the first. Michigan State has not trailed at the end of the first quarter this season. Short kickoff. Here's Morgan on the return. Morgan breaks a tackle and is finally chased down at the 36 yard line by the kicker, Kevin Cronin. Well, Nebraska defensively much maligned coming into this game. But take a look up front. It starts with Valentine, Malik Collins, Mullen. Fourth down play. Great effort. Getting stop after stop in this first quarter, force a field goal in that possession. They need this defense to rise up tonight because offensively, they're just not going to be consistent enough to score 35 points against a team like Michigan State. Now, the Black Shirts have been solid so far in this game tonight. And meanwhile, they put up 10 points on the Spartans defense. Terrell Newby has been battling an ankle injury is in the game and running back there's a penalty marker down movement by Nebraska. Ball start offense number 71 five yard penalty still first down. 
you know it's amazing how different this offense can be when you can move the quarterback Greece you talked on you, you get the fourth down then you move the quarterback and you take a shot and by moving the quarterback the much maligned secondary for Michigan State's already been struggling now they've got a run pass threat on the perimeter and just as we saw Jordan Westerkamp gets lost his sixth receiving touchdown of the year so it's first and 15 after the false start here's cross and knocked down by Riley Bulla after a gain of a couple. Well, Nebraska comes in three and six. First time the Huskers have entered November with this many losses. The last time they had seven losses in a regular season was 2007. But Nebraska's in front after one quarter over the seventh ranked Michigan State Spartans. Nebraska hoping to pull the upset at home. A 10 3 lead after one in Lincoln. Where the Cornhuskers lead Michigan State 10 3. Connor Cook threw for nine first quarter yards, three of nine passing. Meanwhile, Tarmi Armstrong has thrown for 89 yards, and he's back to pass here, going deep on second and long, and a flag is down. Alonzo Moore, the intended receiver. Jermaine Edmondson, the guilty party. And yet another name in that secondary for Michigan State. We've seen freshmen play there tonight. We've seen Demetrius Cox out there, and now Tyson Smith, Arjun Calhoun, and now Jermaine Edmondson, our fifth corner already early in this game for Mark D'Antonio and that's an easy call for the official. You're offsetting fouls. Pass interference on the offense number 82. Pass interference defense number 39. Those fouls offset. Replay second down. Well, you don't see that very often where you have both PIs on both guys. Let's take another look. It's Alonzo Moore. He evidently is back healthy from that shoulder. That's a bad call. I yeah, I don't see that. Either it's a no call or that's on the defense. So they replay second down and 13. I don't understand that one. Mike Riley is in the same boat. Here's pressure up the middle. Armstrong, long throw. Wester camp. Again caught it. Boy, he he's gonna wake up tomorrow. And most of his uh yeah, that's twice now he's gotten drilled by Darian Harris. You'll feel that right now. Forget about tomorrow morning. Look at the back of his head. Hopefully the back of his head doesn't hit the ground. Those are the scary ones, you know, where the helmet hits the ground hard. Hopefully it just got the wind knocked out of him. Mm. Wester camps about 190 pounds Darren Harris about 225 and he got driven to the turf that time by Harris. It's amazing that's twice now the Wester camp has hung on to it despite taking that kind of lick. And that's Dave that's a missed read by the quarterback there you know that's that ball's thrown late in the flat and you put your receiver at risk. Back in a moment third and eight for Nebraska coming up. Nebraska's number one receiver number one Jordan Westerkamp going to the locker room was shaken up on a big hit by Darian Harris hit the turf hard and they'll look at him third down and eight for Nebraska Alonzo Moore has returned to the game he was called for a pass interference a few plays ago he had to leave earlier and again Pearson L who we showed you in the first quarter he's out with a leg injury who's going to catch the ball on third down and eight. 
Armstrong to the sideline and it's nearly intercepted. Arjun Colhoun broke on the ball. It was intended for Stanley Morgan fourth down. Yeah this is the patented uh, Michigan State defense Calhoun on the outside playing that press quarters look and they don't have to be going down the field they haven't been threatened down the field especially by Stanley Morgan and without Alonzo Moore healthy and DeMornay personnel uh, they're going to sit on some routes and if Nebraska is going to convert they're going to have to take these shots down the field. Sam Foltz has 15 punts of 50 yards or more including one already in this game and he almost got that one blocked off the side of his foot I wonder if he saw Edward Barksdale coming and that forced the bad kick as a, a side judge stops at the 43 yard line. That's a punt of about 20 yards. Now Nebraska almost blocked a Michigan State punt in the first quarter. Spartans got close there. Michigan State at number seven in the country. They trailed 10 nothing time their largest deficit of the season. Tommy Armstrong has played well at quarterback for Nebraska which has not beaten a top 10 team when it was unranked since 1977 when they took care of Alabama off play action Connor Cook who has struggled here tonight but that one was on target it was just dropped by Shelton at the 42 yard line had a handful of overthrows in this ball game but that one was on the money yeah that passing game is just out of sync whether it's uh, Connor Cook a little bit off this time RJ Shelton that's the second drop of the game too, Dave now one drop quarterback can excuse the second drop now you got it in the back of my mind am I going to throw the ball your way again when I got guys like Burbridge and Josiah Price who have been real reliable so RJ Shelton's got to shake that off He's got nine passing yards coming off three straight 300 yard games he set the single game Spartan record for total offense in their win two weeks ago against Indiana they're going to run it here to Scott and he's tripped up after a gain of two. Nate Gary the safety flying in there so a third down and long coming up for Michigan State the Spartans were 0 for 4 in the first quarter on third down Yeah, the problem is you know Dave Warner if you're the offensive coordinator for Michigan State you call a first down rollout it's a great design and it's a good play it should have been a first down it's an incompletion you come back a second down only get two yards and you're in third and long right off the bat where's Burbridge down at the bottom of your screen right here. Been their most consistent player offensively all year. But Jonathan Rose has been pretty good on him tonight. They rush for Cook. Another high pass, but it's caught by Burbridge for a first down. <laughs> it was deflected by Kings, who appeared to be the intended receiver. Well, you're going to get the ball to the playmakers, you know, the quarterback. He's trying to get it to Burbridge. It's very clear this ball's going to Burbridge, Dave. Stop. <laughs> That's what you said. How many times uh, when you were at Michigan? I'd rather be lucky than good sometimes. Well, maybe that'll get Cook going. That's uh, their longest pass play of the game. Burbridge has been dynamite. Leads the Big Ten in catches and receiving yards. Cook to the air. Got single coverage. Trying to get a rhythm going with Burbridge. As uh, Gary and Kalu had coverage, and it's a gain of about four yards on first down. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not surprised that you, know, you have some adversity, and this team has faced some adversity this year. Now, they didn't beat Purdue by a whole lot, beat them by three points. They've had to come back in games, obviously the Michigan game. Uh, so when you have some adversity early in the game, Mark D'Antonio, pretty clear with his quarterback, you're going to find your most consistent players, and, and Aaron Burbick certainly has been that. Air Force came back on them. You mentioned Purdue and the two wins by a field goal and then the crazy finish against Michigan Nebraska blitzing on second down and six and Holmes dragged down by Michael Rose Ivy after a gain of a couple you No, know, for a defense that's been so maligned particularly in the defensive secondary coach bank of the defensive coordinator he talked about how difficult the transition has been and getting guys to maybe buck some old habits get away from what they've done before this team right now it looks like an entirely different unit than what we've seen in the past several weeks on defense. You know what's interesting Tom is they've actually been pretty good against the run this season but they've given a big run plays tonight. It's the pass defense that's been poor but they've done a good job in that area tonight against Cook. 
An underneath pass to Kings, and he gets the first down and more. Kings inside the 15, heading for the end zone. It's a Michigan State touchdown. What a great athletic play from McGarrett Kings. Actually, the coverage was there. It's just, it's just the athletic ability of McGarrett Kings. They're trying to beat him to a spot on just a shallow cross. It's going to come underneath. Jonathan Rose and Gary right there, and it's just the athletic ability. And that's that's the value of having a wide receiver that has punt return skills. When you get the ball in his hands, especially in man-to-man -man situations, he makes one guy miss, and he's to the house. Well, that tipped pass that was caught wasn't the most fortunate play that Michigan State has had this season. There's a penalty marker down on the extra point. Connor Cook with his 18th touchdown pass. It was set up with that deflection that was caught for a first down to keep the drive going. Well, Pre-game, the Gold Star families of the Fallen walked from Nebraska ROTC to the stadium, escorted by the military helicopters you saw from the aircrew vengeance. Then the kids wrote notes attached to the balloons that were released just after the national anthem here at Memorial Stadium. That's really cool. I mean, those notes to there are family members who have died in service of our country. Uh, you know, the goal of that organization, founded by Bill and Yvonne Williams, a nice couple out of Omaha, outstanding uh, way of, of remembering our, our service men and women and making sure that they're never forgotten, which is uh, so important, especially this week with Veterans Day coming up. Now Michigan State trailed 10 0, but the Spartans have tied it early in the second quarter. Thrown and kicking it off. And here is Stanley Morgan, a true freshman. And Morgan finds a crease. He's past the 30 yard line and a nice return. A penalty marker down as well. Jermaine Edmondson on the tackle. Let's see what the flag is about. Personal foul. Face mask. Kicking team number 22. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. So that'll put the ball near midfield, Adnan. I think Adnan, people, uh, Clemson silencing the doubters. There's still plenty of them. That was a big win. For Dabo Sweeney and company, as Nebraska will start at its 48 yard line after the penalty. And the handoff to the fullback, Janovich. Janovich looking for contact as he gets 12 yards on the play. Foles, just an update on Jordan Westerkamp. He is in the locker room with the training staff, going through the normal concussion protocol. They want to check, make sure that is something that they can either rule out or certainly confirm puts a lot of pressure on an already thin receiving unit as we know Alonzo Moore is dinged up expect Stanley Morgan number eight the true freshman to get more turns well, that was big there for Nebraska Tom running the ball with success on first and ten now they hand it off to Moore on the sweep and he cuts it back for a first down he gets to the 27 13 yards for Moore. that's his 12th rush of the season a really good signs you know a quick hitter inside that takes this Michigan State defense by surprise you come back with another wrinkle getting more on the perimeter some creativity from Danny Langsdorf their offensive coordinator which you know this this offense as well as their defense has been maligned but they're starting to find a little bit of a rhythm in this game and getting Tommy Armstrong back was a big piece of that. Well, you got the feeling they had to respond after Michigan State score now they're down here where they can get at least three Armstrong in trouble. And there's a flag. Armstrong throws back across his body, and it's a touchdown. But will it stand? No, incomplete. They're ruling it incomplete. I don't think it's going to stand anyway, based on where the flag was thrown in the area of holding. And so it'll come back. Shalik Calhoun, one of the leading pass rushers in all of college football with eight sacks, was held. Only offense number 66, 10 yards from the previous spot, repeat first down. His coaching staff knew that this was a weakness up front with Dylan Utter, the left guard, especially in pass protection. Just not going to be able to drop back seven steps. You're going to see the matchup right here and throw the ball from the pocket when you're going against guys like Joel Heath, who've really come on for Michigan State. That's a clear call. 
and unfortunate. You're going to have to move the pocket if you're going to throw the football with Tommy Armstrong. Came with Mike Riley to Lincoln. Here's a run play. Newby trying to get some of it back. First and 20, and he got maybe three yards. I mentioned it was so important for Nebraska to respond. And every bounce has gone against them this year. Four losses on the final play. Michigan State's third down. Connor Cook throws a high pass. It's tipped, but it's caught by Burbridge, and then they end up getting a touchdown to tie the game. You just got to keep working. You got to believe that the, the ball's going to start you know, bouncing your way and the tide's going to turn for you. But, uh, you know, Go a long way here just to get in position to attempt a field goal. That's in the back of your mind as a quarterback, what you need to be thinking right now in this situation. Armstrong to the air. Calhoun. Armstrong gets away from him. Armstrong makes one defender miss and then throws it at the feet of the receiver. Tariq Allen incomplete. So it's third down and 18. The good news is that Tommy Armstrong and his toes seem to be healthy. <laughs> The bad news is he's going to need to use all that athletic ability because they just can't block this defensive line up front for any extended period of time. Well, Calhoun, a fifth year senior, a two time captain. He is tied with Joey Bosa for the most sacks among active players in college football, 23 and a half over his outstanding career. Two time second team All America and will be a high draft pick in the summer. Third down and 18. The Spartans bring pressure. Armstrong backing up, lobs it up, and it's intercepted. It's picked off by Demetrius Cox. And Cox brings it back to about the 29-yard line. That's a bad mistake there. A bad mistake there. You knew it was a pressure defense, and you knew you're going to have to get rid of the football. You just don't throw it up for grabs. That's three points. And Drew Brown, their kicker, has made a 50 yarder this year but he didn't get a chance because of the turnover by Armstrong. Eighteen giveaways now by Nebraska puts the Huskers at minus nine. Conversely Michigan State plus eleven in the turnover game. They've outscored their opponents fifty four to nothing in points off turnovers. Connor Cook normally makes teams pay for turning it over and Nebraska would have been a long field goal but they're at least in field goal range and the Spartans are going to run it on first and ten. Gerald Holmes averaging close to 20 yards a rush gets about six there. Let's go back and take a look you know this situation a quarterback you see five guys up you know it's a pressure situation if you don't have a hot route call a time out <laughs> you have three of them and oh by the way it's not just him the guys the coaches over here can call a timeout too. That's a missed opportunity for three points. You, you don't have a good route on against pressure, but if you see pressure, get out of it. That's how you get to three and six, those kind of mistakes. In their wins, they're plus four in the turnover margin, minus 12 in their six losses. Second down and four. It'll be Holmes again, and this time he's stacked up. Penalty flag is down. Kevin Maurice and Marcus Newby on the hit. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 55. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. So instead of a third down and a four or five, Kevin Maurice, who made the tackle, got Holmes up high, twisted the mask, and it'll put the ball at midfield for Michigan State. Well, Nebraska. Does not have a takeaway in four of its last five games. The one game where they did turn the opponent over was Minnesota. They had three takeaways in that game and they won that game handily. But Connor Cook's only thrown two picks. Michigan State has only turned it over four times as an offense. Holmes nowhere to go. Brought down in the backfield. Maurice made another play. Dedrick Young, true freshman, was in the backfield as well. Kevin Maurice is a heck of a football player and not a lot of people know about him but everybody talks about Valentine and Collins but Kevin Maurice at 280 pounds six foot three and he's a junior he's making tons of plays in the last two or three games for Nebraska. Well, they're good up front we talked about Collins and Valentine Kevin Williams is back from injury. 
their best defensive lineman might be Freedom Akin Moladun, who leads the team in sacks, second and 12. Cook with time, and the pass is intercepted. We talked about he's only thrown two interceptions, and as we say that, he fires it right to Jonathan Rhodes. I'm not sure that Connor Cook wasn't trying to throw this ball to Josiah Price. Take a look. You're going to see Price come down here. I think that's where he's trying to get the football to. And Jonathan Rose is on the outside, gets turned in, and I'm not sure you get two receivers in the same part of the field. You can see from here. So that looks he like a receiver mistake, that right? Too? Right, Brian? A receiver error there? Very difficult to tell. You have two two receivers in the same area. It could have been anything. But if you see that as a quarterback, that means check the ball down. Somebody's clearly run the wrong route. That seems to not be in Cook's nature. He'd rather take the shot down the field. Here's Cross off the right edge. And at 230 pounds, he moves the pile out to the 44-yard line. So a five-yard run on first down. Just the third interception for Connor Cook this season. He looks out of rhythm, Dave. He just he looks out of rhythm. He's been so good you know, in the last three games, kind of holding this team together when they weren't able to run the football, any kind of consistency in the Indiana game. He talked about being or being in the zone, and he's not in that zone right now. And the mark of a good quarterback is how do you manage that when you're not feeling it? And right now, he's not managing it. That went through the hands of the wide receiver Alonzo Moore, incomplete. He had a blocker out there and everything, but he dropped the ball. It's third and five. We have Lane Hubby out there who had locked up a defensive back, and that might have been a first down had Moore caught that. Now it's third and five. Tommy Armstrong threw an interception on the last possession. That was on third down. Of course, it was third down and long. This is a third and manageable. Five to go. Spartan showing like they're coming. They rush four, and it's a run play. Armstrong taking off in the Spartan territory. All the way to the 39. First down, Nebraska. This needs to be an element of Nebraska's offense. We were talking with Mike Riley last night. He said, you know, I never run these quarterback design runs at any point in his career because he never had a player like Tommy Armstrong. He said he got to spring ball and he said, you know, we ran that zone read. I was like, wow, that's, that's a pretty good design. <laughs> you got to have that element when you don't have the talent offensively that you can just line up and throw the ball down the field. Well, that's why they need an Armstrong back tonight. Riker Fife started last game. Here is Riley on the jet sweep inside the 25 and knocked out of play near the 20 by Grayson Miller. A gain of 18. Whether it's Alonzo Moore or whether it's Riley, this speed sweep is another thing that this offense and, and Danny Langsdorf have not done before. And they were telling us last night, you know, they, some of these things they took from, from Oregon, some they took from Chip Kelly. Uh, and they've started to integrate these things into their offense. I don't know if it's who they want to be going long term, but certainly in the short term in this season, they think it's useful. Armstrong slings it out and another big hit by Darian Harris taking down Tariq Allen a loss of three Tom. Yeah not good job up uh, in the wide receiving core at the point of attack there on the wide receiver quick screen but to Brian's point on some of these perimeter runs I think they knew coming into this matchup it's going to be very difficult for the interior of, of Nebraska's offensive line to block the likes of a Malik McDowell. We've already seen Utter number 66 have a hard time with that. So these perimeter runs and quarterback runs take a little bit of the pressure off that interior front. And a negative play though on, on first down so they're at second and 13. They got to come up with points down here again. Here's a little option and Armstrong hit hard. Another loss on the play. That was John Reschke and Riley Bulla the two inside backers with the hit. Now you're at third down and 14. Well there's there's been questions about Michigan State's defense but it hasn't been about their front seven that's for sure yeah. because their their front four are as good as anybody and these linebackers you know we there was questions when Ed Davis went out early in the year as a great player and a leader on this defense how would these linebackers respond and Darian Harris Reschke Riley Bulla they've been outstanding. I think if you're Nebraska here 
We just run the ball. Make sure you get points. Third and 14 after the Armstrong pick. He's going to throw it. Pressure coming, and the pass is incomplete. Almost intercepted again. Allen, the intended receiver. So it's fourth down. And here comes the field goal team. They brought Kari Willis, a safety, on a blitz. So Drew Brown, who made a 44 yarder earlier, brother Chris was a, a longtime NFL kicker. He'll try a 42 yarder to give the Huskers the lead back. Now, officially a 43 yard attempt based on where they're going to hold it. And this one is good. Would have been good from another 10 or 15 yards. He hammered that one. Well, Nebraska goes up three, and now how will Connor Cook respond? It hasn't been pretty so far in this game. Some missed uh, miss throws down the field, one to Monty Medeiros, and then the interception, which don't know where that ball was going. But you know, there's going to be ups and downs in a season for for a quarterback. And there's going to be ups and downs for a team, and certainly Michigan State has already experienced those. And now you're on the road, and who, nobody cares in the state of Nebraska that they're three and six. They care about what happens tonight, and this is going to be a dogfight. And how does Connor Cook respond? And I don't know, Luke's, you're down there. What have you, what have you seen from Connor Cook and his mannerisms and leadership on the sideline? You know, he's kind of kept to himself a little bit, guys, and you know, not necessarily been overly emotional or. Uh, a rah rah guy on the sidelines. I think he's really concerned with their rhythm. He's gotten on the headset. He's been on the phones. They are just out of sync. And as we've talked about Connor Cook, when he has been a bit erratic or he has been streaking, he misses. He misses high. Be a touchback. It'll come out to the 25 for Michigan State. Here's Adnan. We'll see if Michigan State can respond after Nebraska took the lead back. 13 10 Cornhuskers. And with all the pressure on Mike Riley, the athletic director Sean Eichhorst coming out and giving a vote of confidence, the Chancellor Harvey Perlman doing the same. And the Husker players responding for their coach. And on defense, Holmes dragged down by Marcus Newby, a gain of a couple. And look, I think the bottom line is to, to think about as successful as Mike Riley was at a tough place to win Oregon State, to even think about letting go of Mike Riley after one year is ridiculous. Now, yeah. you could make the case that maybe he wasn't the right fit to begin with. He's personality wise, Brian, the opposite of Bo Pelini. That's one of the reasons why they went after him. Yeah, well, time will tell whether he was the right fit, but the time is not now to make that determination. Damian Terry, a quarterback here. Now we saw him in at wide receiver earlier. He's going to sling it on second down, and it is juggled, incomplete, almost intercepted. It stayed on the back of Jamal Lyles, and Nate Gary could not make the play, but it's third down and eight. Great play by Gary. He's in good position there. If he doesn't come up and make that hit, that's going to be a catch by Lyles. By Michigan State going to Damian Terry, is this a sign of that they don't think they can move the ball in Nebraska? No, Damian Terry's been a part of it, but he has a package in every game for Michigan State. Normally it's run the football out of the Wildcat, but he, you can see that was a great throw. He can throw the football. That was his first pass of the season at 19 attempts last year. Third down and eight. Connor Cook back in at quarterback. Cook waiting now throws and it's caught first down Josiah Price a tight end that's his 12th catch of the season he moved the sticks great protection just take a look at this offensive line gives a great pocket this has been the Achilles heel for Nebraska not pressuring quarterbacks and that's it's hard to cover that long downfield and if you give Josiah Price enough time to do that I mean he's just running a pick route there that's that's a rub route and he was the third or fourth receiver option and Connor Cook finds it. 
Price missed a couple games earlier this season with an ankle injury. Cook going downfield, got a man, but it was underthrown, incomplete, intended for Monty Medeiros. He had the overthrows earlier. That one was undershot. Joshua Kalu was in coverage. And, and he's he's made these. Connor Cook has made these throws consistently. Take a look. Just let it run, guys. You can see it's a wide open post. Plenty of protection. It doesn't seem like he's stepping into the ball, Dave. It seems like you know he's kind of static with his feet in the pocket. As this game goes on, keep a look at take a look at his feet here. You see how he doesn't step into his right leg, doesn't really come through. You see that? Yeah. Not projecting that ball and pushing that ball down the field. And that's all confidence. That's all, you know, hasn't gone my way this, this half. On second and ten, Cook in trouble, flag down. Cook escapes for a moment, but then he's wrapped up for a sack. And it's Kevin Maurice back there again. They're holding on a screen here with Nate Gary, Dave. Pretty blatant. Holding. Defense number 25. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. And that's just a, you know, that for a junior who started 25 games. You know, okay, great job. You read the screen. Now, don't tackle the guy. Right. <laughs> I mean, he's just. Made it an easy call yeah, yeah, that's for the official. And I mean, there was enough pressure that I don't know that Cook was going to be able to throw that ball anyway. The way you want to play that is you want to just box it, box up next to him like a like a basketball player and make the quarterback throw that ball. So maybe you get a tip interception. Try to tackle. First down at the 47 of Nebraska. 247 and counting. Michigan State with all of its timeouts. Play fake. Roll off for Cook. And that pass is caught by Burbridge. Pretty good coverage by Chris Jones. Great throw. Great throw. I mean, that's, that's what you needed. One of these, you just need Connor Cook to come out and throw that ball on the outside. And if you have any doubt, throw it to 16 because he's, he's going to come down. The senior from Farmington Hills, Michigan, leads the Big Ten in catches and receiving yards. He's averaging over 100 receiving yards per game. They lost Keith Mumphrey and Tony Lippett from last year's team, and Burbridge has stepped up as Cook's go to guy. For the ground game, Holmes hit at the line of scrimmage but fell forward for a yard. Josh Banderas, the middle linebacker, in there first. As we hit the two minute mark, second down and eight for Michigan State. 8 0 on the season. They haven't been 9 0 since 1966. Mark D'Antonio did such a great job of this team. They've won 12 in a row. 12 in a row on the road in the Big Ten. Think about that for a moment. And with Connor Cook's struggles tonight, I gotta mention the fact this guy always done his one. He's 20 and one against Big Ten teams. Only one loss in his career in conference. That was against Ohio State last year. Cook and open is the tight end price for a first down. There's a late flag thrown in the middle of the field. Gary had trouble getting Price down. Eventually, he went out of bounds at the 16. A late flag was thrown, and it appears it's on Michigan State. John O'Neill, the referee, trying to sort it out. Pass interference. Offense number 82. 15 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. They end up getting Josiah Price, who ended up catching that football. There he is here. Take a look, see if he pushes off. Oh, he's going out there for a little rub route. That's see, that's the this is the, the pass he caught earlier. They come back to it. And you can't just go and initiate that contact in a pass. So that'll put it back at the 48-yard line. It'll be second down and 23. Michael Geiger made a 46 yarder earlier in the half, but he's been up and down. They're nowhere near field goal range yet. Pressure coming off the edge. Cook steps up and wide open. Burbridge, first down to the 20 yard line. 
And Nebraska knows that they've had trouble getting to Connor Cook, so they try to bring some pressure. But that's the that's the catch 22 for Mark Banker, the defensive corner. You bring pressure, play man behind it. Who's going to guard Aaron Burbridge? You don't have a guy on the team that can play him a man to man. He's got 67 receiving yards now on the day. Here's Gerald Holmes. Waited for his center Jack Allen to get out of the way. And he got a yard of the play. Banderas on the tackle. The Spartans will call a timeout. They have two remaining. Michigan State in field goal range down three. Time now for tonight's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. What were the top four teams in last season's first college football playoff rankings? In order. All right. In order. I'll give you a hint. Only one of the four teams that actually made the college football playoff was in the initial poll, uh, top four. Right, well, I got my, I have my thoughts, but you gave me a hard time for answering too fast last week, so I'm gonna wait. Okay. Yeah, let the fans, <laughs> let the fans stew on it a little bit. Let them think about it. It is interesting, though. You know, so I know this. Ohio State was 16 in the initial, so. Well, there was so much overreaction to the first poll, right, guys? Last Tuesday when it came out, everybody overreacted to something, but it is the first poll, and yeah, we're gonna have a lot of movement. We're gonna have a lot of movement this week. Well, you guys got to consider what team was hot last year at this time that nobody in the world would have figured would have come out yeah. as the number one team. <laughs> what state, actually? <laughs> Well, and what state and which two teams from yeah, that state? See, that's yeah. the thing. You just gave it away now. Two teams <laughs> from that state. All right. I'll throw one. Mississippi State was number one there, just to end that suspense. Dak Prescott and company. By the way, how about the job that Dan Mullen has done with that team yeah, this year? Yeah, wow. And how about Dak Prescott? Wow. They're 7 and 2, and we had the LSU game where they lost on a field goal. You know, the Tigers are unbeaten coming into their big showdown with Alabama tonight. Michigan State, meanwhile, down three, a second and nine here for Connor Cook and company. Holmes has been the workhorse tonight for Michigan State and he cuts it back and gets back to the line of scrimmage. And Darris on the stop again brings up third and long. See if Mark D'Antonio calls a timeout here or not. I don't think he will out on third down. He wants to, to burn this clock. But this Nebraska defense is swarming to the football. I mean you see that's the difference between good defenses and defenses that give up a ton of yards and this this defense has in games this year but they are running to the football for Mark Banker. Now a timeout called by Nebraska. 23 seconds on the clock. All right let's answer the Affleck trivia question. So we mentioned Mississippi State was number one. Florida State was number two. Remember, they had won the title the previous year. Auburn was three. Ole Miss was four. They played each other that week. Right. And uh, Auburn beat Ole Miss. Oregon was fifth. Alabama was, I think, around nine that first uh, I, I first think college the biggest difference, uh, guys, this year is, is you know, Mississippi State obviously had a tough road after that initial ranking. The biggest difference is now that Clemson beat Florida State today, they don't have a very difficult road. So I think they're going to be there at the end. No, you consider, you know, what it takes to actually get to the finish line. And it has so much to do with being healthy and peaking at the right time. One of the things Michigan, Mississippi State struggled with last year, we'll see if Clemson can overcome it this year. Can Michigan State overcome adversity tonight? Trailing late first half and a third down and nine. Well, they'll play conservatively here and run the ball with Holmes. Oh, Cook to throw on third down to the end zone. It's caught. It's a touchdown, McGarrett Kings. Both touchdown passes by Connor Cook have come on third down, and Michigan State has the lead. That's a statement there from Connor Cook and from his coaching staff, having the confidence to call that play and take that aggressive shot right before halftime, and he throws a bullet to Kings. So Kings, who had two touchdown catches all season, has two here in the first half tonight, capping a 10-play, 75-yard drive. 
Geiger puts it through and it's 17 13 Spartans direct TV takes you inside the drive as we take a look at that last touchdown well and anytime you get a wide receiver matched up on a safety it's going to be an advantage for the offense here's Byerson Cockrell and you're going to see Kings just going to come down and run the post and you get good protection for Connor Cook and he can throw a bullet and he sees Reed's too deep defense and the body position of McGarrett Kings and Cockrell can't be right. That's just a, it's too good from the quarterback and the receiver and a great call from Dave Warner. You talked about the confidence this coaching staff has in, in Connor Cook. Who uh, now ties Kirk Cousins for the Michigan State record for career touchdown passes. That's number 66 for Cook. So he'll obviously break that. He's already the all-time winningest quarterback in Michigan State history. Everybody makes so much about the fact that he's not a captain, and I get that. And there are definitely some concerns with that being a senior quarterback. But the guy's 31 and three as a starter, and he's brought this Michigan State team back from a 10-0 deficit. And they have the lead. Loose ball, and it's fielded by the tight end Trey Foster. Nebraska will have it with 14 seconds left. Yeah, you know, I'm with you, Dave. I think you know everybody expects the quarterback, especially a senior, to be a captain. And uh, but you, there's a lot of leadership in a lot of different ways. And like I said, I, I really believe the last two games without Jack Allen, who is their captain, it was an opportunity for Connor Cook to step up and to and to assume some of that leadership. And in the game against Michigan, obviously it wasn't pretty, but he made plays with Burbage. In the game against Indiana, they needed to make plays in the fourth quarter. And I think he kind of turned the page this first half was an opportunity for him to show leadership and that touchdown pass was big for him. Nebraska will get the ball to start the second half. They trail 17 13. Stick around at halftime for Tom Luganville's interview with Mark D'Antonio. Spartans undefeated ranked seventh in the country. They have the lead. Time now for the Buick halftime report at Denver. As we mentioned Michigan State 8 0 trying to go to 5 0 in conference play. They got Maryland and East Lansing next week. Two weeks from now, they're in Columbus to face the Buckeyes. Cronin going for the pooch kick again, and it's fielded at the 20 yard line by Nelson. And he's brought down just past. The 30. Let's check in with Tom Luganville down on the field. Guys, one of the things that this offense has to do, and Tommy Armstrong has to do, is make the routine throws, particularly on early downs. You stay out of those pressure downs where Michigan State wants to come after you. So for Tommy Armstrong, he doesn't set his feet. He throws the ball behind. He throws the ball up off of his back foot. So what he's got to do is take those routine early throws if they're struggling to run the football so they avoid some of those pressure downs where Michigan State can't pin their ears and come after them. That's a great point, Tommy. You know, he's a he's a 50 percent passer. He needs to be 70 percent in the second half to get back in this game. Missed last week's game due to injury. Here's Amani Cross straight ahead, and he bowls to the 38 yard line, a seven yard pickup. No, it's that type of play right there. Just talking to Mike Riley that he wants to give his quarterback a better chance is we've got an injured defender down here for Michigan State but you get a now second and four second and three you feel a lot better about your situational play calling here uh, and offensively if Tommy Armstrong as you mentioned Brian can just stay in rhythm make those routine throws then they're going to have a chance to continue drives and keep Michigan State and Connor Cook off the field Joel Heath the injured Michigan State D lineman and he's coming off his best game according to the coaches against Indiana. He's a two year starter very important player for them up front. But as Tom mentioned a good start for Nebraska between the tackles getting that 230 pound running back a touch. There he is right here I think he just got rolled up on. Well he got hit initially by Shalit Calhoun and then right there, oh. Yeah. oh. And that was well after the play was over too. Yeah. There's no flag. The officials missed that. Jordan Westerkamp back in the game. He was injured in the first half. Second down and three. They'll run it, and it's a first down. Newbie. It's hog tied 
at the 44 yard line Darian Harris with a big tackle because if newbie breaks that one he's got the speed to take it to the house and there was a good play by Harris uh, in between the tackles that's where it's been a struggle running the football for Nebraska with Heath on the sideline I would be surprised if they start to try to attack on the inside they're getting a little bit more push on Malik McDowell and now Craig Evans is going to be relied upon with Heath on the sideline. Armstrong out in the flat great play in the open field again by Darian Harris he takes down Stanley Morgan lost a yard on the play boy Harris has been all over the field he's got 10 tackles for Michigan State he certainly has and he needed to make this tackle because they gambled and brought pressure up the middle that's Harris's play to make and when you have a wide receiver I know Morgan is a true freshman but he's one of their more explosive players and a linebacker makes that play you know that's a good play. They bring in the fullback Janovich on second and ten. Spartans going to bring pressure again, and here's Cross. He's got a gap. Got the first down. Boy, the Spartans bringing a lot of pressure and running the ball. Nebraska having tremendous success here early third quarter. Great block by the fullback Andy Janovich. Take a look. The 35 on the edge going to come out. Physical. That's why he's a crowd favorite. Now because Michigan State is getting giving up chunk plays on the ground do they got to stop blitzing. See what they do here on first and ten. Armstrong off play action looking deep got a man. It's caught. And he's down inside the one Alonzo Moore. Got away from the defender. This style of defense puts so much pressure on the corners. Looks like he's going to be just short. It's a good call by the official down on the one inch line, but a lot of pressure on these corners. And that was true freshman Tyson Smith at corner who was beat. Cross behind Janovich. First and goal for Nebraska. A pitch to cross. He's in. Touchdown. Flag is thrown on the near side, but it's offside on Michigan State, and the Huskers have the lead. Offside, defense number 89. The penalties decline. Result of the play is a touchdown. And Malik McDowell injured for Michigan State. He just tried to walk off the field and took a seat at the three yard line. Remember they lost Joel Heath earlier on this drive. That's their two starting defensive tackles injured on this possession. Boy. And Heath looks like he's getting a new tape job may be able to return in this game. McDowell. He didn't look good. Hopefully that's just a cramp. Couldn't have been a better start for Nebraska. In the second half. Let's see if we can take a look. He's right in the middle. The left leg you can see swinging his uh, I think it was a teammate there it looked like a teammate Lawrence Thomas either stepped on him or fell on that left leg. Well, when you come off with your leg like that locked out it's it's a cramp but hopefully that's all it is for Malik. What a start for the second half to huge Nebraska. considering the way they ended the first half. Giving up a touchdown with 17 seconds left when they had to lead the entire half. Drew Brown puts it through and Nebraska regains the lead 20 17 trying to knock off the seventh ranked team in the country. They have not lost three straight home games since 1968. They're trying to avoid a defeat here in front of a sold out crowd for the 346th consecutive game an NCAA record. They had the lead early in the third after an impressive drive to start the half. Here's Shelton and he's had a couple drops he muffs the kickoff and he won't even get to the 20 dropped at the 16 yard line by Simpson. Go back and take a look at that long play. This is Grayson Miller here. He's a true freshman. They're going to get Alonzo Moore out here one on one. This is 
This is not the responsibility of the safety. This is all man-to-man -man coverage. Grayson Miller's doing what he's been taught to do. And this corner is also a true freshman. Tyson Smith just doesn't have the speed to stay with Alonzo Moore. This is the way that this defense for Michigan State has always been run. Since Pat Narduzzi, D'Antonio, we're at Ohio State. And this is, they live with it and they die by it. The difference is they don't have Trey Waynes. They don't have Darquez Denard. They got the true freshmen out there playing. Yeah, three of them in the secondary. Here is Holmes trying to find a hole. And he's across the 20 yard line, pick up a five or six. And you know, Greece, you become so reliant upon a good pass rush, two deep along the front. Shalik Calhoun has a monster first half, and you've got Malik McDowell. You have an injury there in the defensive tackle spot. But when you become that reliant that you're going to get pass rush, you feel like it's going to take some pressure off. But off of the play action, no pass rusher, guys are left on an island. Bottom line is both these quarterbacks, if you give them time, they're going to make throws down the field. Yeah, both offensive lines have done a pretty good job protecting the quarterbacks in this game. Haven't seen a lot of pressure on either quarterback. This time Cook is in trouble and he has a completion to Pendleton as fullback. Nice tackle to keep him from getting the first down. Josh Kalou made the stop. It'll be third down and a yard. They brought a blitz that time. Marcus Newby was in the backfield. But Cook wisely got out of there and dumped it off to Pendleton. You know one of the biggest questions in my mind coming in with Michigan State to this game was with Jack Allen back at center would they be able to run the ball more consistently between the tackles in short yardage situations and here's another opportunity. It's Burbridge on the end around he's got the corner in the first down and he's dragged out at the 36 by Gary. 11 yards for Burbridge on the run. Boy, and that's telling to me. Dave Warner, Jim Bowman, their co offensive coordinators. That's how much respect they have for Malik Collins and Valentine and Maurice on the inside. That in third and one, that's a dangerous play in short yarded situations. Any kind of penetration will knock Burbridge off. Still not settled on that ability to just line up, turn around, hand it, and power people off the ball. Well, the guy that's leading them in rushing, LJ Scott, only has three carries. Gerald Holmes with 12 rushes, 86 yards. Madre London is available. He has been injured the last two games with a bad ankle. Cook throwing deep, and he's got Kings, a diving catch inside the 40 yard line. <laughs> we thought this might be a pass happy game believe it or not yes Nebraska and Michigan State in a pass happy game and we're starting to see it here in the second half what a game Kings is having I mean that's unbelievable some of the catches that he has made and he's he's starting to be that number two wide receiver opposite Aaron Burbage and if you have that kind of balance that's really nice as a quarterback it's his third catch the other two went for touchdowns that one went for almost 30 yards. And a first down in Nebraska territory. It's Gerald Holmes straight ahead. And Holmes keeping the feet moving. Stacked up at the 34. Got a couple. And Darris in there leading the charge defensively for Nebraska. Now Michigan State has won close games this year. Nebraska has lost all of the close games that they've been in. Who will prevail in this one? Michigan State has won 12 in a row on the road in the Big Ten. They've lost only one November road game under Mark D'Antonio. That was in 2008 at Penn State. They're down here, but they've got a second down and eight inside the 35. Cook going to work. Burbridge in the middle of the field. Burbridge is gone. Touchdown, Michigan State. Time in the pocket. You give Connor Cook time in the pocket and the ability to wait, not in the first window where Burbridge was covered, but in a zone to get to that second window. That second window is, is dangerous for defenses. That's where Jerry Rice made so many of his plays because you had time for Montana in the pocket to wait for the second window on the slant. And that's exactly what Connor Cook did for Burbridge, and then he had the speed to, to finish. And Connor Cook all alone atop the Michigan State record books and career touchdown passes. 
with 67 now on the year as he finds Aaron Burbridge his go to guy and Burbridge with his sixth touchdown catch of the season Sparty retakes the lead in the third. The Nissan Heisman House here in Lincoln. That is not a former Heisman Trophy winner on the right, but <laughs> he's our Heisman Trophy winner, Neil Everett. There's a former Heisman Trophy winner, Steve Spurrier. Now, don't get any ideas, uh, Nebraska fans. The reason he's here is he's really close with Sean Eichhorst, the athletic director, going back to Eichhorst days at South Carolina when, of course, Spurrier was the head coach. I know who came in second when Spurrier yeah. won the Heisman. So do I. <laughs> Your former partner. <laughs> Your dad. <laughs> 1966, right? Yeah. Eric Pretty good Cross. Michigan State team that year too. Bob Smith. Yeah. That's the last time they were nine and zero, and they're trying to get there here tonight. Here's Morgan, and he is in trouble, but Morgan somehow broke free. A flag comes down as Morgan is stopped at the 27-yard line. There was Eric Crouch, the 2001 Heisman Trophy winner. You saw with Neil Everett there in the Heisman House here in Lincoln. Personal foul, hands to the face, kicking team number five. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. It's twice by Michigan State on kickoffs that they made that mistake. Let's give the big guys up front some credit on this uh, touch touchdown to Burbridge. Take a look at the protection. Freezer right there, guys. Look at this. Plenty of time, which allows Connor Cook to identify and then find the win, the second window. This is uh, when you give a, a senior quarterback that amount of time. He's going to carve you up and then you see the speed from Burbridge to get to the end zone. Cook was four for that drive passing for 75 yards. But Nebraska takes over after the penalty on its 41 yard line. Here's a Monty cross and cross across the 45 gain of seven. Here's Adnan in the studio. <laughs> Battle of top five teams so obviously the loser of that game will be movement in the college football playoff rankings Michigan State number seven trying to move up a four point lead but the Huskers have a second and three and Armstrong throwing it deep and it's incomplete but interference Brandon Riley the intended receiver and they keep picking on Jermaine Edmondson. They're picking on everybody. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, just just throw the ball up. Why doesn't Nebraska continue to just throw the ball up on the outside? Pass interference. Defense number 39. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And it, I mean we've talked about this that this is their style of play. This is how they want to play defense with the corners. They just don't have the corners they used to have. And so uh, they're going to have to figure this out Dave. I wonder does Armstrong want that one back because Riley had a step that's a better throw it's a touchdown could be yeah yeah if you're going to err though in a game like this if you're going to err don't overthrow him because there's no chance of a penalty if you overthrow him. here's cross leveled in the backfield he'll lose a couple Malik McDowell back on the field he was in there along with Darian Harris 11 tackles now for Harris. If I'm, I'm Danny Langsdorf. I, I I know that Nebraska is about run the football, uh, but this front seven uh, is too stout to run the ball against consistently. Uh, don't listen to the outside pressure. You got to do what you need to do to win the game. And if you got to throw the ball on the outside on first and second down until they go to a two deep defense and force you not to do that, that's what you got to do. Two yard setback, second and twelve. Multiple tight ends in here. Play action for Armstrong. And he's going to go deep to the other side of the field. This one is caught. My goodness, what a grab. Riley took it away from Edmondson, who thought he had a pick. And Edmondson was looking for an offensive pass interference. Edmondson's in great position. He just doesn't play the football. He's looking back for the ball and allows Riley to go right over top of him to get the football. It's a good no call. 35 yards and it's first and goal. Nebraska again with a great response to a 
scored by Michigan State. Terrell Newby in the backfield with Armstrong. Armstrong going to swing it out to Wester Cam. He going nowhere. Demetrius Cox all over that. And the fans boo as uh, he loses about four yards. Yeah, the fans. <laughs> The fans are booing here. They're not the ones that got to try to run the ball with against this front seven, right? It, it's 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 tough sledding in there. So I don't disagree with throwing the football down here inside the five yard line one bit. Cox, a first year starter, and the secondary's playing with a lot of true freshmen tonight on the back end. Armstrong on second and goal. Throws an uh, interception through it right to Riley Bulla. Never saw him. And Bulla takes it back to the 15 yard line. You can't have that happen if you're Tommy Armstrong down there. That's twice when they've been in scoring position, he's thrown an interception. But if you're going to throw this ball here, you got to put it all up near the goal post. That's where the ball needs to go. And Tommy Armstrong, it just comes out flat on him, right into the hands of Riley Bulla. See, that ball has got to be up by the goal post. Way too short. Mark D'Antonio Spartans get another takeaway. They have the lead midway through the third. Well, Nebraska has turned it over 19 times now, and in their six losses, they're minus 12, they're plus four, and they're three wins. Of their six losses, four have come on the final play. Three by two points or less, a Hail Mary, and an overtime loss as well. Off the right side, it's Gerald Holmes. He gets about seven or eight yards on first down. Let's go back and take a look. Here's Riley Bola right here. And freezer right when he throws the football, guys. I want you to look at two things. One is I want you to look at Tommy Armstrong's feet. And then I want you to look at the ball needs to be thrown right at the goalpost. It comes out flat. And a lot of it is because of Tommy Armstrong's feet being poor and when he comes off the field he's telling you I got to get it up there. Mechanics let him down there. That's the second time this season he's thrown multiple interceptions through three against Miami. Here's Holmes again on second down and he'll get the first down brought down by newbie. Let's check him with that now. Next week, Ohio State's at Illinois. Michigan State is home against Maryland. Then the Spartans and Buckeyes meet on the 21st in Columbus. Will both be undefeated when they square off? Michigan State in a tight game. Cook off a play fake. Going to try to throw underneath and hit Pendleton, but it's incomplete. No, you talked about the footwork for Tommy Armstrong there on that throw. We saw a lot of that inconsistency from Connor Cook in the first half. We're not seeing that right now. On that play right there, I know it was a check down, it was an incompletion, but you look at his pocket po uh, posture in, the, in, in his base. He's stepping into throws, he's working through his progression in command of the offense, and you've seen that consistently throughout the last few drives of this offense, and it's all Connor Cook's confidence and comfort level right now. He had a handful of overthrows early in the game, but he's definitely settled down. Three touchdown passes in the game. They hand it off in the sweep. Shelton has Pendleton blocking for him, and Shelton is out of bounds after he picks up the first. Steps out at the 41 to pick up 12 yards. We've talked a lot about Aaron Burbridge catching balls, making touchdowns, but he does the dirty work too. Take a look. We saw that last week with Laquan Treadwell a little bit, and, and Burbridge is starting to kind of exert himself in the run game. And if they can get that game going, that perimeter run game with Shelton, that's something that, that can add a little bit of sting to this Michigan State offense. As you mentioned, they've had trouble just running it straight ahead consistently against this Nebraska front four. Holmes. And he pinballs forward close to midfield. Kevin Maurice went for about a three yard ride. It's interesting though that Gerald Holmes has become the back that they're going to. It's not LJ Scott, their leading rusher. Andre London is available. He was injured the last couple games with an ankle. And they have Delton Williams, a guy that's gotten a lot of carries this year. Now Holmes had just 39 attempts coming into today, but 
He's gotten the bulk of the carries in this game. Well, people forget L.J. Scott is a true freshman. You know, and it wasn't like it was L.J. Scott's show. He was kind of helping out with Madre in London. I, I don't. I think it's the right call not to put everything on a true freshman. Holmes again, and he gets stood up short of the first down. Josh Banderas meets him at the 50. It'll be third and one. That being said, Gerald Holmes is a big, explosive, powerful guy who can really take it the distance, probably of all the backs on this Michigan State team. He's the one that's got the most explosive capability. And, and of the 23 run plays, he has touched it 17 times. We'll see if he gets it here on third down and one. We've seen Cook throw it on third and short a lot. And that's the formation they're in now. Cook rolling right dumps it off to Pendleton who has the first down tackled by Chris Jones at the 45 of Nebraska and it's just creativity here David you know Pendleton has been that big play guy that uh, when they do some trickery uh, they get the football to we saw it in the Michigan game he had a big catch in the fourth quarter that uh, set up a touchdown and again we see there's it's a great play it's a conversion but when are you going to need that physical downhill run game in short yardage situations throughout the course of the season. And that's something that Michigan State still needs to find. May need it this game yet. They have the lead and they're on the move. At the 45 yard line. Play fake for Cook. He's going to get hit. And he finds Burbridge who breaks a tackle at the 35. Tried to stiff arm Banderas went out at the 16 yard line. Gain of almost 30 yards there. When we saw Byerson Cockrell get beat by McCarrick Kings for a touchdown. He has a blow up shot here and just gets caught in the middle. We were talking with Mark Banker. You see Cockrell there. He's, he's got to make that that hit. You know, he's yep. got to dislodge the football. Instead, he gets caught in no man's land. And that's what's been driving Mark Banker, the defensive coordinator, crazy in this secondary between Gary and Cockrell. Making plays, missing plays that are there to be made, and it's only inches, but you see the result. Yeah, 124 yards after the catch. Couple of fakes for Cook, looking, and now throws it, and it's nearly intercepted. Nate Gary got a hand on it. Would have been an incredible pick. I think Cook was just trying to throw it away there. Second down. Dangerous pass by Cook, either trying to throw it away or trying to hit Kings down the sideline. Can Nebraska come up with a stop and force a field goal? Second and 10 for Michigan State at the 16 yard line. Cook pulls it back, fires, and it's caught. An easy touchdown. Jamal Lyles, his first touchdown of the year. That safety play. We're talking about that safety play. This time it's Nate Gary. Just gets lost back there. Number 25. You can see him. Good communication back there. And it's it's been all year. He is right here. Against Purdue they look lost and the, the, I think people underestimate how difficult it is to change from one defensive system to another and how deep the most difficult part is in the secondary and reading routes and matching routes and it's not easy no excuses but that's why Nebraska has struggled. All right it's an 11 point lead for Michigan State let's check in with that man in the studio. Here it's 31 20 Connor Cook with four touchdown passes 21 now on the season and with more on Cook let's check in with Tom. No one of the, I think the law starts of quarterback play in Greece I know you'll agree here is ball handling and when you have such an emphasis on running the football then what you're going to do whether it's in your zone read game your play action game your quarterback's got to do a great job with how he flashes the ball how he rides the back at mesh points and then still being able to have a little bit of a hide and seek with that ball once things have developed I think Connor Cook is really underrated in this regard and that's what set up why that play was so wide open in the back end. Yeah, that's a good point Tom it is a lost start and 
ball handling, I think, is making a comeback just because of the fact that you've got teams like Baylor and 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 those style of offenses where it is a run until that quarterback pulls it out the last minute and throws it downfield. Back to back four touchdown pass games for Connor Cook as this one didn't go into the end zone, went out of bounds. So Nebraska's going to have good field position again. Kickoffs have been an issue for Michigan State in this game because they've had two penalties with their kickoff Great coverage kick unit. Out of bounds by the kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35 yard line, first and 10. Cronin was just trying to either force Nebraska to go over there and field it or kick it into the end zone, but it went sideways out of bounds. So Nebraska will have it on its 35. Now the question is for Michigan State, you know, how is their secondary going to play? Are they going to continue to be attacked by Nebraska down the field as we see Monty Medeiros? He had another corner out on the field, number 21, who's a receiver that they moved over to corner. Here's Amani Cross looking for a cutback lane. He bounces forward to the 40 yard line. That's a gain of five on the play. Yeah, Medeiros changing his number normally wears 88. He practiced for a few weeks at cornerback, but this is his first action on defense this year. Junior from Cincinnati. Following the footsteps of Tony Lippett last year, the receiver, great receiver that they had to move over to, to corner, and they've had some issues Michigan State has at that position. And there was trying to figure out where to line up there. There was no receiver on the outside. Second and five. It's Janovich, the fullback, and he runs over two Spartans and Moves the chains, gets to the 47 yard line. Nebraska changing things up. We've seen a lot of different looks from them offensively. Now that they got the run game going again, do we see some shots down the field now that they're back towards right. midfield? Well, and Mark D'Antonio has made one other defensive adjustment. He has now moved Demetrius Cox back from safety to corner and taken Jermaine Edmondson out of the game. So uh, very clearly, they're trying to find the, the, the right combination on the outside. Here comes Alonzo Moore in motion. Armstrong rolling out, being chased by Darian Harris. Armstrong lets it fly for Westerkamp, and he was out of bounds. Demetrius Cox in coverage gave him a little shove at the end to make sure that he was out. Boy, you see the arm strength there, running, rolling to the left, Armstrong. Great effort there by both players, Westerkamp and Tommy Armstrong. I can't tell you how, how difficult of a throw that is. Running full speed with a linebacker on your heels and to flip your hips and throw going against your body 45, 50 yards yeah. downfield on a dime. Well, he's got certainly a strong arm and he's a very good athlete. He made poor decisions, though, in this game with the two interceptions, both inside the 35, one on the goal line on that last Nebraska offensive possession. They swing it out to Westerkamp. He gets the first down. Great block by Lane Hovey out there. Grayson Miller, one of those true freshman safeties, made the tackle. Westerkamp shaking up a little bit there as he went to the sideline. Nebraska in Michigan State territory again. Closing stages of the third quarter. The give to Amani Cross off the right side. And Cross able to slip out of a tackle. Banged out of play inside the 20 by Monte Nicholson. I think this team came to play tonight, Dave. I know it hasn't all been pretty, but Nebraska, they have not quit in this game. They continue to find production offensively, throwing the ball on the last drive. Now it's been mostly on the ground here, and you start to wonder, Joel Heath out of that defensive line for Michigan State. Some of these other guys, McDowell, a little nicked up. How much do they have left in the tank? But can Nebraska score down here? Janovich. It's maybe a yard. Nicholson in there. Makes the stop. Nebraska has struggled in the red zone through an interception on the last possession. They're down 11 as we go to the fourth, but Nebraska with a chance to get some points here. Number seven, Michigan State trying to stay unbeaten.
Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hilton. Michigan State leads by 11 over Nebraska. It was 10-0 Cornhuskers late in the first quarter, but the seventh-ranked team in the country has stormed back and is trying to win 13 consecutive Big Ten road games. They've won nine straight road games in November under Mark D'Antonio. The last road loss overall was at Michigan. The last one in November was at Penn State back in 2008. Nebraska on the move in the red zone now a second down and nine flag down Armstrong going to the end zone and it's incomplete intended for Janovich John Reschke a linebacker was in coverage and Michigan offside, State defense. was offside number 89 five yard penalty repeat second down that's Shalik Calhoun who has not been much of a factor in this game he's got a tendency to disappear in games. Trying to get a jump on the tight end Carter there. Tendency to disappear. That's not a that's not a good analysis of Shalee Calhoun, especially so? for NFL types. But you you agree with it, don't you? Second down and four. They run cross off the left side. Got the first down and cross taken down at the two. It'll be first and goal. Well, I don't think that we're going to see Tommy Armstrong throwing again in the red zone, especially inside the 10 yard line. It's going to be the Imani Cross show, and you get a great kick out on Demetrius Cox by Janovich. And you get first and goal to two. Cross, a guy who has 26 career rushing touchdowns, might get a chance at number 27. He's got two tonight. First and goal at the two yard line. It'll be the big guy. Cross had trouble getting the handle. He won't go down, though. Look at him fight. He'll come up just short of the goal line. He should have lost wow. a couple of yards on the play. That's a that's a great one-yard run right there. You know, a lot of times these running backs are judged on yardage and touchdowns and all that, but that, that should have been second and five from the five. Instead, it's second and one. And he had trouble getting that pitch and corralling it. Michigan State getting Lawrence Thomas on late. They have too many guys out there. Here's Cross, and he's tackled at the two. He lost a yard. There was no flag on the play. Let's see if we can count them up. Michigan State thought that they had 12 guys out there. Let's check in with Tom, who's right there. They, they were having some real issues trying to figure out how they wanted to play their personnel. Lawrence Thomas was already on the field, came back on. Malik McDowell, number four, came on. And they wanted to move who their one in their three technique was. So you see 72 coming off right now for Michigan State on defense. Craig Evans. Now he's going back in. A lot of confusion. Yeah. Michigan State needs out. to settle down here. It's third down and goal. Armstrong rolling out. And he's going to keep it. And he dies for the goal line. He's in. Touchdown. Great decision from Tommy Armstrong. Watch him lower his head here and go after Demetrius Cox. You think Tommy Armstrong doesn't want to win this game for Nebraska with the way that this season has gone and all of the close plays gives a look to Demetrius Cox after he punches it in. And they're going for two to try to make it a three point game. And it was hard to tell on that first down play how many guys were on the field. And. Every play is reviewed, so. Really on the field of touchdown is confirmed. And they looked at it there and told uh, John O'Neill, the referee on the field, that he was in. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of chasing points this this early in the fourth quarter, especially with the way that they've struggled inside the 10 yard line. I think I kicked the extra point here. Cross motions out of the backfield. Armstrong rolling out and that pass off target. He tried to hit Westerkamp, who was open. So a failed conversion. And it's a five point Michigan State lead early in the fourth quarter. The Huskers able to move the ball on the Spartans all night long. And Tommy Armstrong with a big run to get Nebraska within striking distance.
A 10 play 65 yard scoring drive that took just over four minutes but you did not like the decision there to go for two. Well, I don't like chasing points this early in the fourth quarter still 13 minutes left in the game you got all three timeouts. I would understand if you had a great running game or if you had a great mismatch with a big tight end or something but Nebraska has neither of them. Although if that was a better throw in Western camp they, they get the two points. It's tough. It's not an easy throw. Got a touchback. Here's Adnan. All right, Adnan, thank you. Michigan State on top of Nebraska 31 26. Connor Cook has four touchdown passes. Three have come after an interception that he threw in three drives. He's hit Kings, Burbridge, and Lyles. He's really spread the ball around tonight, and he is now the all time leader in touchdown passes at Michigan State, breaking Kirk Cousins' career mark. And Cook will throw on first down, and that pass is almost intercepted. Or did he catch it? No, incomplete. They got to look at this one. Chris Jones dove for it. Well, we got the field is an incomplete pass. Second down. Let's see if he controls it. No. Great effort, Chris Jones. We Nick. talked a lot about Michigan State secondary struggles, but Nebraska's had their share as well. And Chris Jones, a true sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, getting his chance, making a play. And Delton Williams is the running back for Connor Cook here on second down and 10. Cook with time and the traffic. Burbridge, a sliding catch. Right at the first down marker, and he does have it at the 36 with Banderas and Kalu converging. Boy, and Josh Kalu got hit on his on his leg, on his knee there. He's a little bit gimpy. He wouldn't be shocked if Dave Warner up in the box sees that, takes a shot. Damian Terry is in the game at quarterback. They flex Connor Cook out wide to the left of Terry, who threw his first pass of the season in the first half. There's a flag down. Ball start. Offense number 11. Five yard penalty, still first down. It's on Jamal Lyles, the tight end. Boy, Connor Cook has got it rolling. Why are you taking it out of his hands and putting it in yeah. Ter Damian Terry's hands? Now? Again, this is part of the package that, that Dave Warner, the offensive coordinator, likes. It's not taking the ball out of Connor Cook's hands, it's just an extension of their running game. And so Terry adds another element that they like to sprinkle in and force defenses to prepare for. There's Dave Warner co-offensive coordinator with Jim Bowman. First and 15. Cook at a throw again. Comes back to the middle of the field and it's incomplete. He went for A.J. Troop. They come out slinging it here on this possession at second down and 15. Oh, and again, Nate Gary, another opportunity in that secondary. If he's playing that route well, that could have been an should have been an interception. He's playing the receiver rather than looking at the quarterback. He's looking at the receiver when in zone, you should be looking at the quarterback and breaking on the football, not on the receiver. That's dangerous, right, to go late back over the middle? Oh, that was super late. Second and 15. Nebraska rushes four. Cook, long throw, and the catch made, but only a few yards for Josiah Price being covered by Josh Kalu. So it brings up a third down and long. One of the biggest plays of the year for Nebraska. Can they get some pressure in the pocket? That's been the difference. When they have gotten pressure on Connor Cook, they've affected his accuracy. When they have it, he's carved them up on the back end. Took a little long to get the play in. Connor Cook was waiting for it. They break the huddle with 10 on the play clock. Cook has been brilliant on third down. Cook pumps. His pass is caught by Shelton. It's a first down. 
Sheldon has had a number of drops in this game, but with four Cornhuskers around him, he hauled that one in to move the sticks. Three hitches, two pats of the ball. Look at this time in the pocket. One, two, three. He almost pointed to the wide receiver. That's how much time he had. And that, you, you can't cover. You can't put that on the secondary. You got to get pressure. That's what it all comes down to. So why not? Bring a blitz. Why not send more than four? Well, we saw what happened uh, when Aaron Burbridge in man-to-man -man coverage uh, beat him for a touchdown. And Damian Terry in the game at quarterback again. He's going to run it, and he is grabbed at the ankle by Josh Banderas. And he gets lassoed at midfield. A three-yard pickup for Terry. Ten and a half to go in the fourth. The Spartans trying to get to nine and zero, oh, five and zero oh in the Big Ten. Win their 13th consecutive game. It's their longest winning streak since the mid 50s, and it's the fourth longest win streak in college football. The longest is owned by Ohio State at 21. The Spartans will play the Buckeyes in two weeks in Columbus. Cook back in at quarterback on second down. His pass is complete. Shelton lunges to the 45. Third down and short coming up here for Michigan State. And it's not too early for Connor Cook to start milking this clock. You're up four. You know, be very deliberate in how you operate. Take all the time that you possibly can off the clock. You're under 10 minutes now. Protect your defense. You know, they've been a little bit vulnerable uh, in the back end defensively. So get a third down conversion here. Be smart with the football and then milk that clock. Delton Williams is the tailback. Pendleton in front of him on third and short. Here's Williams, and he is close. They're going to mark him just short. Josh Kalou made the tackle. Now Michigan State went for it on fourth down and one in the first quarter and did not get it. And the Spartans are going to go for it here. They're going to bring in an extra offensive lineman for fourth down. They're bringing in Benny McGowan. And they're taking out Ryan Allen. Like he might have got ding there. He got a backup coming in. He'll go to left guard. That tells me from Nebraska's standpoint, they're probably going to run the ball to the other side of the field. That's a tendency. Fourth down and one. You mentioned the failed fourth down conversion in the first half. They're four of 11 on the year. Cook lines up in the gun, and he's going to keep it, and he's got the first down. Big play by Connor Cook to move the chains. Michigan State leading Nebraska 31-26. The Spartans trailed 10-0 in the first quarter. With Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville, Dave Pash at Memorial Stadium. It's the 346th consecutive sellout, an NCAA record. They haven't had a lot to cheer about here in Lincoln this year. Six losses, the first time they've entered November with this many losses. But they've been very balanced offensively. However, they have not been able to stop Michigan State on the last three drives. And the Spartans are at the Nebraska 41 with a fresh set of downs with eight minutes to go. Here's Gerald Holmes. He gets grabbed by Jack Gangwish at the point of attack. Minimal game. Boy, and Jack Allen came out of that pile really ginger, Dave. And that's a guy they cannot afford to lose. He was dealing with an ankle the last two games. This was one of their unbalanced lines. So he ends up at right guard. He's not at center. And they're going to run the power behind him. He just comes off and. So you have Benny McGowan snap it. That's the third yeah. center we've seen in the game. Boy, that, that right ankle still tender. And again, his brother Brian Allen is still out. McGowan's in at left guard. Damian Terry in at quarterback, and he's going to throw a play action, and his pass is pulled in for a first down. Catch made by Burbridge inside the 30. You no, know, fellas, you see this play clock starting to roll down, and I've watched it for each of the last five plays. Michigan State has essentially broke the huddle exactly with 14 seconds left on almost every single play they've run on this drive. And Brian, to your point, with the quarterback being able to run the football, you create a half a man advantage when you force the defense to have to account for the quarterback running the ball. That was a great play by Michigan State there. Both quarterbacks have been sharp on this drive. They're inside the 30. Nebraska brings pressure. Cook takes off. 
thrown down to the 24 yard line by Nate Gary. So a run of three or four yards for the quarterback Cook. There, this, this is very clearly, this is four minute offense here. Even though there's six and a half left in the game, uh, the, the way that Dave Warner is calling these plays now, it's impressive. This, this kind of a drive is as important as some of the scoring drives earlier in the game because you're taking, you're squeezing the life out of this yeah. game right now. And they've had the ball for half the quarter. Yeah. Second and seven at the 24. Cook keeping it and he just slides down. Lost three or four on the play. Boy, and that would have been a big run for Gerald Holmes if he would have given it to him. Now it's third down and long. And if Nebraska can get a stop and force a field goal, it would stay a one score game. But it goes back to your point about the missed two point conversion. Yep. Nebraska would have to get a touchdown and then convert a two point play on the next possession. First things first, got to get a stop on third and 11. Cook has owned the Huskers on third and long in this game. Nebraska bringing pressure late. Cook lobs it up there and it is caught. RJ Shelton with a great grab at the five yard line. Well, Mark Banker went all out pressure and he left his corners on an island on the outside and Kalu, who was a little bit dinged up, he had that knee earlier in this quarter, but in position to make a play, but RJ Shelton with two drops in the first half, bad drops, comes back, doesn't get down, doesn't let his teammates down when they needed it the most and comes up with a big grab. The two huge catches on this possession. Cook over 300 yards. For the tenth time and for the fourth straight game here's Holmes on the run shakes a tackle heads for the end zone and they're going to mark him down at the one it'll be second and goal on the one yard line and there's the knee and it's close and again it just has to cross the front he went down a little awkward too. Lucky that he didn't uh, get injured. Now this clock running. Nebraska has to get a stop. Force a field goal try. Second and goal. Holmes again, and he's in for the touchdown. Wait, that had to be one of the more impressive drives of the season for the Spartans. And throwing the ball, Terry comes out. Throws the football. Connor Cook was on point. Shelton made plays, and then the running game and the legs of Connor Cook converting on a fourth down, and then some other plays in sprinkled in. That was an impressive drive executed well by Connor Cook and called well by Dave Warner, the offensive coordinator. 16 plays, 75 yards. It took eight minutes and 50 seconds off the clock. And now Nebraska has only four minutes and 16 seconds left, trailing by 12. Well, Connor Cook was fired up during the break as uh, R.J. Shelton and came up with two big catches on that possession, including that one to set up that last touchdown that extended the lead to 12. Yeah, I think that's big. You know, that's that's trusting your players and knowing that you know, despite the fact that R.J. Shelton started the game a little shaky with some drops, that in crunch time when you needed to make a play and and the quarterback gave you a chance, you made it, and then you can build relationships on on those kinds of plays. Connor Cook continues his great season a Big Ten player of the year candidate a Heisman Trophy candidate second straight four touchdown game Janovich on the return he's loose and pushed out near midfield by the kicker Kevin Cronin boy how many times has Nebraska started after a kickoff near midfield. Tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Connor Cook has been terrific on third down, especially McGarrett Kings with two receiving touchdowns for the Spartans in this game, both coming in the first half. It's been impressive to watch how this offense has responded. You know, it didn't start great 
they got some momentum go back to that tip ball where they kind of went into the hands of Burbridge and that led to a touchdown and that seemed to get some momentum going for them in the passing game and that last drive capped off by a great play by by R.J. Shelton. Connor Cook in the second half only four incompletions 180 yards two touchdown passes. Nebraska still has life. Need to score quickly and get an onside kick. A long throw by Armstrong, but that's on the money to Jordan Westerkamp. My goodness, that was from the far hash. He's just trying to duck out of the way, it looked like, when he chucked that thing to Westerkamp at the 30. He's got a great arm. I mean, there's no question about it. That was a that was a long throw, and we've seen a couple times where he's been running to his left and, and turn flips his hips and makes these deep throws. He'll pass again, got single coverage, and it is incomplete. That would have been a touchdown if Moore could hang on. He's hurt. He's got a bad shoulder and kept him out of the game against Purdue last week. Argent Colhoun had the coverage. Boy, that's that that's tough because Alonzo Moore's gutting it out here. He's got a bum right shoulder. He's trying to make one hand catch and then it comes down right on top of that shoulder, and that's painful. I mean, that's he's in a lot of pain. In that end zone, but should have been a uh, penalty. Yes. Because Calhoun's got his arm hooked, and look, the back judge is looking right there. Why don't you throw that flat? It's pretty clear. Instead, there's an injury, and it's second down with 3:46 left. Nebraska needs two touchdowns. Now they have all their timeouts, so they score quick enough. They don't necessarily have to try the onside kick. You got to feel for Alonzo Moore because he knew coming into this game that the likelihood was that he was going to get hit on that shoulder. Take you know, and earlier in the game he went down hard, came back in, he's gutting it out, showing some some guts. And this Nebraska fan base needs to give him all the support they can. Alonzo Moore injured on the play. He wants to stay in the game. Was this interference on Arjun Colhoun? Oh, there's no question. The back judge is looking right at it there. He's got his right arm on his right, on his left hand, and this should be a first and ten at the 16 yard line for Nebraska. Second down, Nebraska trailing by 12. Needs two touchdowns, 346 on the clock. They have all their timeouts. Armstrong rolling out in trouble. Gets out of trouble inside the 30 and steps out. So gained only a couple yards. And third down and long. Nebraska in four down territory. And again, they went for two on that score earlier in the quarter. With about 12 minutes left. And had they just kicked the extra point, they could get a field goal here. They, they wouldn't right. need the touchdown in this right. possession, but because they failed going for it early, yeah. they need two TDs. Yeah, it's just, there's just, it never. Rarely, I won't say never. Rarely works out when you go for two that early in the fourth quarter. Armstrong, one of six on third down, third and seven. And wide open was Morgan. They gave him a lot of cushion. That was an easy pitch and catch for a first down to the 15-yard line. Yeah, I'm not sure why Michigan State isn't just playing in a cover two defense and, and playing coverage, especially with how they've struggled in the back end. You know, I understand there's a way that you play, but there's also being smart at the end of game and not putting your players that are the most suspect players on an island. Inside three minutes to go. Will Michigan State stay unbeaten? In command right now, Armstrong off a pump fake. Gonna fire a back shoulder throw that's incomplete. Brandon Riley, the intended receiver. Colhoun in coverage again. Armstrong has been up and down tonight. Got a second and ten. At the 15 yard line, Nebraska trying to avoid its seventh loss in the regular season. Last time that happened was 2007. That's the only time it's happened in the last 50 years here at Nebraska. Armstrong to the end zone, and it's incomplete. That was Edmondson who broke it up. Morgan, the intended receiver. Finally, good position by Edmondson. He's on the outside, man coverage every single snap of this game. Breaks it up. 
key is getting his head back. See him get his head back, and then he's able to hand fight. If his head wasn't turned back at the quarterback and you're hand fighting, now that's going to be called a penalty. Or maybe no penalty based on what we just saw. <laughs> right. <laughs> Two more chances here for Nebraska to get into the end zone. He can still get a first down, of course. Armstrong a third down over the middle. Morgan's got it. Dice for the end zone. And they're going to mark him down at the two. It'll be first and goal from the two with 2.39 on the clock. Nebraska trying to get up there and run a play. And he's definitely down. Good yeah. call. Yeah, get that play called. You want to keep that personnel, trying to substitute personnel. Now I think that now I think there's 12 players on the field for Michigan State. And there comes the flag as Newby is dropped short of the goal line. But you're right, Greece, and that's why the flag was down. We saw on the last drive a player run off then run back on the same player for Michigan State because they weren't sure if they had too many on and they actually had 11. This time there definitely were more men than allowed on the field defensively. Illegal substitution. 12 players on defense. Half the distance to the goal repeat first down. Yeah you can see there's Nine guys in there and three, three DBs. I, that's why. I, that's why I like trying to get a timeout from Mark D'Antoni. That's why I like when offenses go fast inside the five because it's very difficult for defenses to substitute 35 yards away. That clock is running right now. First and goal. And Newby is stood up. They don't want to have to use their timeouts as Reschke made the hit. Nebraska's got to hurry. You got to get up there. You're at 208. You also want to get a good play call though too. So you have to throw the ball here. Get Tommy Armstrong on the edge. That's how he ran it in last time. It's Newby and short. he's short. You got to call timeout. Tackled by Harris. Now, I don't think he used your timeouts yet. He's yeah. got to get up there and snap it on third down. They're Mike going to Bradley call a timeout. Call. Yeah, you, you got to you got to take a timeout. Just you need to get this this ball in the end zone, and you need to get a good play call. You've run two plays that have gone nowhere. You need a good call. And I'm definitely down there. So it'll be third and goal from the one. They put a few seconds back on the clock. So 150 to go. Two timeouts left for Nebraska. Look at our college football playoff rankings brought to you by Allstate. Week number one from the selection committee, but things will shift depending on what happens in the LSU Alabama game. Bama up by 10 right now in the second half. TCU lost. Big win for Clemson at home over Florida State. It'll be interesting to see how the committee views that Thursday night game for Baylor at Kansas State, where it looked like the Bears were going to pull away. K State made it close. Yeah. I I think that every team, no team's going to go through the whole year and just blow everybody out. I mean, we see teams that are going to have a loss, like Alabama. Uh, and I think impressive on that list also was Notre Dame. Deshaun Kaiser had a great day. Yeah. Handful of touchdown passes for Kaiser. Third and goal for Nebraska. Armstrong going to keep it, and he'll make it into the end zone for the touchdown. And that's why I like that timeout there. I, you can't. You're going to need to get an onside kick here to get back in this game, and and those timeouts may not even be necessary. And you need to get a great play call on third down there. Probably Dave called two plays on the sideline. If you didn't get in there, the other the next play was already called. So I just like everybody getting on the same page in big situations like that. There's definitely that school of thought. The other one was save your timeouts in case you don't get the onside kick. That right. way you could get the ball back with a three and out. Right. Hard to do with just two timeouts as the extra point makes it a five point game with 147 on the clock. One touchdown on the other pylon for Tommy Armstrong. He runs over Demetrix Cox, this time on the other pylon. And Mike Riley, I think it's safe to say that, that this team is beginning to buy into Mike Riley. I know it hasn't been pretty. And the record, everybody likes to just throw out three and six. But the reality is that this team is better than three and six. They could easily be six and three. 
and the way that they've played tonight against a very good football team, I think you have to be encouraged if you're Mike Riley. Right, Luke's? You've got to be, and if you're a Nebraska fan, if you're really so concerned about this hire and where they're going, then you should be far more concerned if each and every week the team just went out and laid down when things didn't go their way. And that hasn't happened. And that goes to your point of buying into Coach Riley, buying into what the future is going to be. It hasn't been easy, hasn't been pretty. Things haven't gone their way, but this team has never once folded their lawn chair. And I think that tells you about their medal, but it also tells you about the respect that they have for the new vision going forward. Well, again, the BYU on opening day, the Hail Mary, three two point losses, uh, two, two, two one point losses, one two point losses. Nebraska goes for the onside kick here, and that was too easy. Wow, Demetrius Cox had no trouble covering that up. And so Michigan State will have it. Nebraska can stop the clock twice. This week on Sunday, NFL Countdown, as Peyton Manning returns to Indy, it turns out his impact ran far deeper than just his play on the field. Meet the dozens of high school players named Peyton throughout the state of Indiana. Sunday NFL countdown following NFL insiders. It all starts at 10 a.m. on ESPN tomorrow. <laughs> it's not that bad, is it? <laughs> well, the people here in Nebraska, they expect a lot, and so does the administration. Bo Pelini won nine, uh, seven games or more every year and was fired. Michigan State had to run it. And Nebraska will use a timeout here as Holmes is stacked up after a one-yard gain. Let's check in with Adnan. All right, one timeout left, Adnan for Nebraska with 140 to go at second and nine for Michigan State. Let's bring Tom in again. You know, guys, such a great tradition here. A lot of winning, a lot of years of sustained success, but there are some challenges too. Let's take a look at some of those challenges in recruiting. So you take a look at the footprint for Nebraska. Look at the amount of ESPN 300 prospects that have come out over the last five classes, not only in Nebraska, but in the states that surround and connect to Nebraska. Then transition that to how many of those prospects ended up committing and signing with the University of Nebraska. When you see numbers that are that low, that means that Nebraska is going to have to go an entirely different direction and widen the, their net as they cast it out for prospects, which is a very, very difficult thing to do in today's college football landscape. Holmes has stopped, Tom, so Nebraska uses its final timeout. It's third and long. Let's see if Michigan State keeps it on the ground or decides to throw it here. And Nebraska could get the ball back if. The Spartans can't pick up a first down. Tom go ahead. Well guys I think the one thing that that is really glaring when you look at this predicament for Nebraska going forward in recruiting is look at the average miles away from campus of the signees for the University of Nebraska 837 miles. Now look at the average miles away from campus for the rest of the of the college football world and the power five conferences it's almost three times as much so in a world where you're so dependent upon sophomore and junior year early uh, unofficial visits this puts Nebraska at a distinct disadvantage in recruiting well they're at a disadvantage right now with no timeouts left for Michigan State gets a first down the game is over if you're the Spartans what are you calling here? Are you yeah. just going to run it? Or yeah, you got to run the football, yeah. run the football, and make sure you take those complete 40 seconds off the clock, and then you'll pooch it down inside the 10 and make them go the length of the field. With about 40 seconds or so. But let's see. Connor Cook going to hand it off to Jamal Lyles at tight end, and there's a flag down. Lyles is tackled at the 43 yard line by Byers and Cockrell. They're going to get Donovan Clark for a hold. Coming but around. you stopped him. It's it's fourth down. You got to decline this, right? Holding. Holding. Offense Holding. number 76. A penalty's declined. Fourth down. So Nebraska will get another shot. It was interesting that they decide to hand it off to a tight end yeah, there on, on an end around. I think they were just trying to. To maybe catch him by surprise. 
Uh, these fans, you know, they realize that there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> well, there'll be about a minute left when they get the football here. And Jordan Westerkamp is the deep man for Nebraska. Hart Barger had a 60 yard punt, but it went into the end zone for a touchback. They don't want that here. They want to. There's, there's a flag down. Delay a game taken by Michigan State. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Now the clock will start you know, on the snap. That that uh, penalty by Donovan Clark cost about 25 seconds because you know you have the 40 second clock which would have run down, but instead penalty and you start the 25 second clock. So that penalty, while it looked innocuous, cost seconds, valuable seconds in this game. It's been an interesting year on special teams for Sparty. Art Barger's punt heading to the sideline and it checks up. Goes out of bounds around the nine yard line. So Nebraska 91 yards away from an upset. But no timeouts and only 55 seconds to work with. Nebraska has been attacking the Michigan State DBs all game long. Yep. And this will be no different. So does. Mark D'Antonio decide to play a little bit more conservative on the back end with a little bit of zone and protect these young corners. Edmondson is in as well as Calhoun Cox at safety and they've got Monte Nicholson at the other safety. There's been three or four different combinations and Mark D'Antonio is going to take a time out here maybe to talk about how they're going to play in this two minute situation. It's interesting though Brian that you, you three guys on the back end that are true freshmen started the game none are in right now because yeah. those guys have been beaten and obviously he trusts the veterans even though they may not be as good or as talented as those freshmen. Well we've seen Edmondson get beat we've seen Tyson Smith get beat for a touchdown we've seen these officials be pretty lenient with the way that they've called in man to man situations so if I'm Nebraska I'm going to continue to throw that ball up on those guys and maybe the at worst get a P.I. call. Well Nebraska fans are used to this right a close game yep. that's a chance finally for the Cornhuskers to have a different outcome. Well, I think if you would have told them that you know in prime time against a top 10 football team that you have a chance down five at the end of the game to go win it I think they would have taken that the beginning of the game and again remember that failed two point play and they would have just needed yeah if they had converted that they, they would just have a field goal needed to tie the game. Got to go 91 yards. Armstrong looking deep and Wester Camp is open. The clock will stop to move the chains. Ball is at the 36. 49 seconds left. So they did try to play zone. Great job by Tommy Armstrong and Wester Camp reading it and just settling in that zone. Clock started on the ready for play. It's at 44. Pressure coming from Michigan State. Armstrong got him. Camp. He's to the 30 yard line. Clock will stop as they move the sticks with 37 seconds left. Wester Camp is hurt. Michigan State brought a lot of pressure there. Mark D'Antonio, it's pretty clear he's conflicted on the sideline, and hopefully, Wester Camp is okay. But a great read back to back by both Wester Camp and by Tommy Armstrong. Remember Westercamp went into the locker room at the end of the first half and was evaluated for a concussion and sent through the protocol and now he's come back out and taken another hit. No tech second runoff in this situation with the injury to Westercamp on the catch ball is at the 30 yard line of Michigan State. No timeouts 37 seconds left in the ball game. The first down stopped the clock. That's why no 10 second runoff. Well, your Western camp going off, trying to get this crowd into it. They're, they're chin, they're back into this game. 143 receiving yards for Western camp, but he's got to sit out for at least this play. Nebraska, 30 yards away from an upset. Michigan State undefeated, ranked seventh. And the Spartans, eight and all. Oh. Armstrong with time. Armstrong airing it out and it is intercepted.
intercepted and then dropped. Colhoun could not keep it as he hit the ground. So it's incomplete. Armstrong threw it up for grabs. Wow. Plenty of time in the pocket and this is the play that Colhoun needs to make. It's right there in his hands. Would have been a great catch. He had it. Another Gotta complete the catch to the ground. He did not. D'Antonio thought it was over. 23 seconds left. Armstrong and the receiver was out of bounds. He caught it. It's a touchdown, but he stepped out. Was he pushed out? That'll be the question. Brandon Riley into the end zone, but he stepped out of bounds around the five yard line. The officials are having a discussion. I don't know that he was pushed out. It didn't look like he was physically pushed out, Dave. And if that be the case, then he cannot come back in and be the first person to catch that football. Take a look down here. He's running. The defensive back is looking back. It's not. He's not pushing him out of bounds. He clearly he just runs out of bounds. The receiver was forced out of bounds. Came back in. And himself as a player. The pass a so they ruled that he was forced out of bounds, and it's a touchdown for Nebraska. Unbelievable! The Huskers had the lead with 17 seconds left. You think about all of the calls and all of the balls that have gone against Nebraska this season and finally they get one call they get one call that goes their way I think it's the wrong call I think so too I don't think he was forced out at all because the defensive back is looking back for the football the on the field was the pass receiver was forced out of bounds came back in established presence caught the ball for a touchdown. That ruling was under further review. They can review this. They can look at this. I, I do not think he was pushed out. I think the ruling on the field was incorrect, but now it's up to replay. Tom Kissinger, the replay official. Here they are right here. Clearly, that defensive back is looking back. So if you're looking back for the football and the receiver is behind you, how do you force him out of bounds? He has every right to run the, the field as the receiver does, and Riley just goes out of bounds and then comes back in. So. so they can't review whether it's push or whether there was the push by the defender by, by Edmondson, so I'm not sure what they're looking at. I mean, he definitely stepped out. If you can't review what the push whether there was a push or not yeah. by the defender then what are you looking at. Yeah you can't review the penalty. He definitely stepped out. I don't, I don't know why they would take this long to see whether he stepped out. We can clearly see that initially and the official threw the hat. And when you see the official throw that hat that's because he saw the receiver step out of bounds and then it comes down to whether or not they believe he was forced out. Or whether he went out on his own. Yeah, Edmondson, He's out of Edmondson has After every right to run that ruling of the field of touchdown stand. Michigan State down with 17 seconds left. Boy, and that's got to be a tough one for that replay official to to review because he knows that uh, it was a bad call. Yeah, that was a bad call, and you can't review the penalty and the push or the lack of a push. So again what they were looking at a replay was to see whether he definitely went out which is what we could see all along Armstrong in trouble spins out of a tackle on the run oh. and the pass is broken up. Well you got to throw that away if you're going for two points yes. you're, you're, you're up one if you throw an interception they run it back to you lose the football game. Holy cow. Darian Harris broke it up. Dangerous throw by Armstrong. Already threw one interception on the goal line earlier in the game. That's 39 38 Huskers. And if Darian Harris makes this interception, he's got nothing but green, or that's Cox. Got nothing but green grass to the other end zone. So now, 17 seconds. Michigan State does have two timeouts, and they can win the game on a field goal. 
boy, we do. We're just just talking about all of the the bad bounces that have gone against the Huskers. And you love to remind me about this. The good bounces that Michigan <laughs> State has gotten this year. You know, I'm just saying things kind of have a way. They do usually work themselves out. <laughs> Michigan State with two wins by a field goal and then cover your ears. The fumble recovery in Ann Arbor with no time left. Return for a touchdown. Nebraska with three losses by two points or less. They lost in a Hail Mary. They lost in overtime. Four losses on the final play. Are they going to escape here with a win? 17 seconds left. We'll see if they kick it deep. R.J. Shelton is the deep man. He's standing at about the 15-yard line. And it's a liner that's fielded at the 25. So out to the 41-yard line with 14 seconds left is Monte Nicholson. Let's check in with Adnan quickly. Boy, I'm really surprised he didn't try to kick it deep well, there. That was a great play by Monte Nicholson. He caught that ball. It was a wiffle ball coming down the field. He caught the ball, and now that's at the 41-yard line, one completion puts them in position to attempt a game-winning field goal. That's a huge play by him. Michael Geiger's career long is 49. Connor Cook, the ball in his hands. Four touchdown passes on the day. 14 seconds left. The Spartans have two timeouts remaining. They're down one. Their undefeated season at stake. Cook back to throw steps off over the middle it's caught the clock stops to move the chain with seven seconds left ball at the 41 yard line of Nebraska they're going to take a timeout Michigan State and how many big plays has McGarrett Kings made in this game two big touchdowns again and again Connor Cook with time in the pocket and he's finding these receivers and they're making plays Geiger made a 46 yarder earlier Career long, as we mentioned, is 49. Got a decision to make here, Dave. Seven seconds. Can you run a quick play to the sideline? You, you can. You know, it, five or six yards. You can absolutely. That ball's got to come out quick now. If I'm Nebraska, I'm telling them to defend the sideline. Well, I guess you don't have to throw it to the sideline. You got the timeout. Still got a timeout. Absolutely. You can throw it to the middle of the field if you want. But if you throw it to the middle of the field, you you got to go down. Yeah, true. You've got to go down. Nebraska missing the two point conversion on the last touchdown. So Michigan State in position. They can get a few more yards to give Michael Geiger a shot to win it. Ball at the 41 yard line with seven seconds to go. I like throwing a quick slant, you know, on the weak side and just telling my receiver that after you catch that ball, get up and get down. Cook back to throw. Looking. Pumps. In trouble. Gets rid of it. And is there any time left? Nope. No, it's over. Nebraska pulls the upset. Mark D'Antonio arguing there should be one second on the clock. That was a poor job by Connor Cook. You've got to get rid of that ball. You've got to know how much time is on the clock, right? Absolutely. That has to be talked about on the sideline before you ever run this football play. You're going to throw it quickly. If nothing's there, you throw it in the ground, throw it out of bounds. But right now, it's not there. He almost, the ball almost came out of his hands. Now, here goes the ball out of bounds. You're at one second, zero. It's over. What an effort by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Everybody telling them how bad they are. Three and six. Mike Riley, one of the most stressful weeks of his career. The expectations here are through the roof. You're on prime time on national television against a top 10 team, and they came to play. And here's Tom Luganville with Mike Riley. Coach, your team has been through so much, and you've been on the other end of this thing, what, five times now? Yeah. Your kids made plays. You told me before this game you really liked your kids. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about them right now? Oh, boy. <laughs> I feel it, I've said this from the beginning. I'm not making this up. I love this team. They never have quit. 
You know, this thing could have fallen apart with all the tight losses that we had, Tom, but I'm really, really proud of them because they never quit. They never quit practicing. They got ready to play. Mark's team is a great team. It was a great win for the Huskers. So your quarterback, Tommy Armstrong, comes back off of the toe injury, makes some phenomenal plays in the second half, assess his performance. Yeah, it was, uh, I thought he did a great job. And he, Tommy is a battler. I mean, he never stops fighting. And we had the one ill-fated drive where we had the pick, and it didn't look good. Everybody kept playing. He made a lot of plays down the stretch. Go enjoy this win. Thank you, Tom. All right, man. <laughs> A controversial go-ahead touchdown by Nebraska. And then the clock runs out. It's not when it goes out of bounds, it's when it touches out of bounds. So there was no time left. The game is over. Nebraska ends Michigan State's bid at an undefeated season. 39-38 the final for Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville, Dave Pash. So long and off to Los Angeles.